Yes. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to our regularly scheduled meeting of Monday, July 17, 2017, with the Town Council. Anthony, if you could lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Dolores. Councillor Bello? Here. Councillor Hammond? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Latina is maybe late. Councillor Martino? Here. Councillor Rell? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Barry? Here. And Mayor Montaneri. Thank you. Thank you. Here. Yep, I saw that. That needs to be added. Uh, can I get a motion to add to the agenda a change order uh, with respect to Caton Field? Motion to add to the budget uh, a change order for Caton Field. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, first of our business is uh, public comment. Public comment this evening? Yes. Hi, Gail Stewart, 411 Main Street. I'm not quite sure of the process. I'm um, here to talk about the um, Weathersfield High School diving blocks, which is on the agenda for tonight. And I'm just encouraging town council to please approve the bids that are gonna be presented tonight. Um, I've been in touch with um, Mr. Emmett and Mr. Maltesi and Coach Lee. I do know that the um, bids that will be presented are over budget. I do want you to know that the swim and dive team boosters has raised, raised $900 to offset um, the cost. So I think one of the bids is $980 over budget. So those boosters have raised 900 of that 980 and um, I will personally write the check for the $80. So I'm asking um, for all of you to please approve this. Um, the swimmers are very anxious. We have eight home meets. Um, practice starts August 24th. So we're hoping this process can be completed and done and they can get in the pool by August 24th. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Other comment? comment? Um, Ms. Emanuel in back. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, <good>. Sorry <laughs> if I'm out of order. Sorry we'll get if, I'm, if I'm out of order. Uh, Kevin Sullivan, um, 779 Wright Road. I'm a member of Bike Walk Weathersfield. And I understand the town council will be considering a proposal to uh, apply for a DOT community connectivity grant. And Bike Walk Weathersfield fully supports that and ur urges the council to consider that. Uh, anything that can be done to uh, improve and enhance uh, the town's uh, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure is, is a plus for the town. Uh, in this case, I believe there is no cost to the town. Uh, so that's always wonderful. And I have a letter that I th would leave with the Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Dorothy Herovis. I live on 654 Highland Street in Weathersfield. <laughs> uh, I have a petition here for repavement of, of Highland Street. Uh, it's a little strong. I want to say, preface this by saying I've spoken to a few of the council members about this issue, and you've all been very kind and, and very uh, willing to help in any way, so I commend you all. Uh, we demand that the town council of Weathersfield allocate funds for the repavement of Highland Street. This road has never been repaved in the almost 40 years that I have lived on this street. It's time that attention should be focused on a highly traveled main thoroughfare of Weathersfield in order to maintain the town's reputation and beauty and most importantly not to devalue our homes and property. Um, I've taken a little trip around Weathersfield uh, the last couple of days 
And I've noticed that most of the side streets off of Highland Street have been repaved. Um, in an area where it's relatively new uh, neighborhood, and that has taken precedence over completing Highland Street. In 2010, I've spoken to the town engineer, and he said that uh, Highland Street, f the corner from Griswold to Highcrest, had been done, but after that, nothing had been done. And it's uh, seven years since that was, that was repaved. And uh, I was told that there's no money to complete it. Now, I can understand where maybe one or two years um, you don't have the money to do it, but somewhere we should rate that if you couldn't complete Highland Street in one year, put it on your agenda for the following year, and it has not been done. So uh, I, uh, you know, urge, not urge, but would like very much if attention by the council could be paid to the street. It's, it's horrible. Uh, many neighbors have told me that they've called in to say that it's a horrible street. And uh, I have, my husband and I have blown a couple of tires actually on that street, and it's getting worse and worse. So I would appreciate it if, if you could all pay attention to that area and perhaps something could be done. I would appreciate that. Thank you. I have um, copies of the petition. Would you all? It, yeah, to the clerk okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Yes. Yeah, everybody's quick tonight. Hold on. I'm going to. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Claire Carney. I live at 16 Rainer Lane. And um, I'm also here to speak in favor of the uh, recommendation for um, approving or applying for this grant for bike bicycling and for walking. I love to do both, and I'm really excited about seeing improvements in this direction. A couple things that I would ask, um, as I, I see there's reference made to some plans that are already in existence. Um, so I just want to make sure, though, that we are careful to consider that um, bicyclists come in many different forms, shapes, and sizes. So they're not always just a single pedaler. Sometimes they're towing something, sometimes they're tandems. So if you're looking at setting up bike racks, make sure you set them in situations or places where they can accommodate different configurations. I also want to um, suggest that any changes to crosswalks um, be thought through in a logical way from a pedestrian standpoint because one of the things that I've noticed when I'm walking is that if it's a not if it if the crosswalk is not logical from a walking standpoint people are, are not using it they're actually jaywalking and so if you're looking at improving the walkability um, think about where you're placing those crosswalks and then the last thing that I would bring up is about aesthetics so more signs is not necessarily a, a better thing. Uh, there have been lots of studies, especially over in Scandinavia and other parts of Europe, where too many signs causes more accidents for some reason. And they figured out why that is. But um, when I'm walking, I look around because th that's what I love about Old Weathersfield. And in some areas, there are so many signs that it looks like clutter to me. And some of those signs are falling into disrepair. And when they fall into disrepair, then they become um, eyesores and an expense to fix them. And crooked signs that are aged or rusted are not um, fashionable, or they don't add to the character of old Weathersfield. They just kind of look like they need to be repaired. So instead of putting up more signs to facilitate these routes and, and the walkability, try to figure out more creative ways to uh, advertise um, what, we, what we're developing. And again, give some consideration to fewer signs rather than, than more. 
And I think those were the only comments I had, but overall I'm in full support of this and I'm really anxious to see these improvements because I just love this area and I think it will benefit from, from, from all of this work. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Chris? Good evening, Chris Trazic, 125 Cedar Street in Wethersfield. Uh, I'm chairman of the Wethersfield Tourism Commission and we have a short letter that I will give you, but I'll skip most of it. <laughs> um, really here in support of the town applying for the community co connectivity with the Department of Transportation. It's really an unexpected opportunity for us to be able to build on some of the improvements that we have already been doing in the town of Wethersfield. Um, the Tourism Commission with a grant from the National Trust for Historic Preservation created a master plan several years ago that really talked about how to make Wethersfield um, more economically viable, how to create it to m make it more attractive for visitors, but also for the residents. So over the years, we've had the opportunity to be able to make some of those improvements um, with the use of other grants, wayfinding signage. There have been improvements to some of the intersections, Church and Main Street, which was a long time coming that we're all very happy about, um, Hartford Avenue and Main Street, Hartford Avenue and State Street, which was just recently worked on. So there are still a number of other ones that we think will just increase pedestrian safety, um, make it more bikeable for the community. There are a lot of cyclists now in the state of Connecticut as well as across the country. Um, and I know the commission and the Wethersfield stakeholders, which are really the businesses in Old Wethersfield, as well as the historic attractions and commission members have talked about this and may really put together a list of recommendations for the town to consider when they're applying for the grant. So we just encourage the council to approve um, the application for this and hopefully we will be one of the lucky ones who have some money to make some improvements. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Tom, you here. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. <clears throat> On tonight's agenda, there are spending items being submitted for council approval. The total approximately $700,000, of which half is being financed over three years. Nevertheless, we continue to spend at a pace that amazes me. It seems like the thought process is, well, it's in the budget, so vote yes and move on. Well, the budget isn't cast in stone. If you remember the discussions that were had a few months ago when it was suggested that we might need to revisit the budget, remember the property tax bills we all just received with a note enclosed that says, we'll let you know how much you owe when the state lets us know. Until such time that we know exactly how much our town will or will not be receiving in state funding, I suggest that you f freeze all capital improvement purchases. It's the only responsible thing to do. The budget you adopted includes almost $14 million in municipal aid, almost 8% of the total budget. <clears throat> if those funds don't eventually flow to the town, I'm afraid we're all going to be in deep goo. We we'll need to ask our neighbors to the north for advice on how to pay our bills. <clears throat> I'd like to offer a few comments for your consideration before you approve tonight's spending. Item A, purchase of a 17-year-old boat. Why would we buy a boat that's this old? To save money? I understand there's an account with money in it to be used for a boat. But well and all well and good, but we're still spending that amount of money. In a few years time, you'll be looking at another purchase for another boat. And under the justification portion of the agenda item, it will read, the boat is over 20 years old, it's continually out of service due to repairs, and it's past its useful life seems to be a common theme to describe town equipment, vehicles, boats, etc. How about some shared services? The town owns other boats, a new police boat, one or two fire boats. Can't the harbor master share one of those? <coughs> and if you absolutely must buy a boat, buy something that you can get some life out of. Spend the additional money and get some use out of it. Item C, purchase of a truck lift for $165,000. Unless there's much more to the story than is written on the agenda item form, this seems to be absurd. For justification, the form states that the lift is estimated to be over 50 years old, 
It cannot lift the majority of vehicles in our truck fleet and it's past its useful life and is a safety risk. Under impact, if not approved, the town garage will continue to be unable to perform work on the majority of the physical service vehicles and will incur costs for bringing vehicles to an outside vendor. Is this the majority of the physical service vehicles or the majority of the heavy trucks? <clears throat> Before you approve this purchase, you should be asking a few questions. Is the lift in service today or has it been removed from service as it is a safety risk? If it's still in use, that seems like a huge liability for the town and I suggest you take it out of service immediately. If it is out of service, when did this occur and how many vehicle repairs have been sent out to a vendor since that time and at what cost? Typically, what are the number and costs per year of these contracted truck repairs? If the mechanics are unable to perform work on physical service vehicles, do we need to imply, employ five full-time mechanics? How many repairs require a 70,000 pound truck lift? I will assume that the 70,000 pound lift covers the fire trucks in our fleet. How much heavy work is required? Seems to me that once a vehicle requires significant repairs, we tend to buy a new one. I spoke with a neighbor of mine that has a, operates a truck terminal and heavy truck repair facility. <clears throat> he maintains a fleet of 60 vehicles, tractor trailers, dump trucks, triaxles, admittedly no fire trucks, They've been in business over 40 years and maintain five to 15 truck repairs per week. They do all their own heavy work. They don't vend anything out and they do not have a lift or a pit. <clears throat> you can vend a lot of work out for $165,000. How about considering a lift that will handle the majority of the fleet, say a 30 pound lift that is available in the 20 to $25,000 price range. How about one of our neighboring towns? Does Rocky Hill or Newington have uh, a suitable lift or maybe even Hartford? Could we explore a shared services agreement? I would hate to see that kind of money being spent on a piece of equipment that will sit idle the majority of the time. I think you need to gather a lot more data before moving forward with this type of expenditure. <clears throat> Item D, replacement of a skid steer for $55,000 using a $14,000 grant. Once again, the justification for this purchase reads, the 2000 and wood skid steer is past its life cycle and we would be replacing an aging and increasingly not in service loader due to multiple needed repairs. Wouldn't you like to see some numbers and data instead of words to justify the expenditure, such as how many hours are on the machine? How many times has a skid steer required repairs since new other than routine maintenance? How many days has it been out of service for these repairs? What are the costs for these repairs? Materials, as the town employs its own mechanics. Is it the only loader the town owns? Could another loader be utilized if and when the machine was out of service? And lastly, item G, starting blocks for the high school pool. In the packet tonight, there are approximately 50 pages of documentation presented by the Board of Ed on door locks and closers, uh, tabled at the prior meeting. Yet for this $30,000 item, there's a couple of pages and one picture of the replacement uh, starting blocks. Can you make an educated decision based on the information provided? I couldn't. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Katie Sullivan, 79 Wright Road. Um, I'm the vice chair of the Weathersfield Tourism Commission and I wanna echo uh, Chris's statements about uh, applying for the DOT grant. Uh, it's nice to have a grant that we don't have to come up with a matching fund for. Um, I've had the opportunity to represent Weathersfield at the Discover New England Summit where I presented to various tour guides from the European market. Uh, one of the things that really attracted their interest, and hopefully we'll get some business out of it, um, was the fact that we are a walkable and bikeable town. That's an important thing to people from Europe because that's what they're used to. So the more we can improve that and the more we can encourage Weathersfield or advertise Weathersfield as that, as that type of town, I think it's going to help us to bring in more tourists to town. Um, 
you know, and not to mention that all these things are safety issues for people in town as well. We have our wonderful Heritage Walk with signs all over telling all about our history, and it would be nice for people to be able to bike that walk, because bike the walk, but um, it is some distance between signs, so um, it would be another thing that we would really appreciate having those uh, improvements done. So thank you for your time. I hope you'll support this issue. Thank you, Kate. Other public comment this evening? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I was kind of floored over looking at the agenda as to all the items that were up for probably vote tonight and to get moving along, especially with the state of the state. The state of the state has a lot to do with the state of the town. And you all know this, or you should know this. And when, we, we pa when you passed your budget last, whatever time it was, last meeting, or the meeting before, whatever it was, I got the impression that any differences are gonna be made up by the taxpayers that you're short that's coming from the state of Connecticut. And with that, the most logical thing follows with what Tom was talking about. We should not be spending any money that we have to spend, that we should not have to spend. Appropriating money for all of these items, and I could read them off like Tom did, and there's some that he missed, is totally wrong. We don't know what our budget is going to be. And because of that, we must hold back any spending. The only spending we should be doing is that that is necessary. And I don't believe creating another job is necessary. I don't believe in purchasing a boat is necessary at the moment. I don't believe putting in a, a, a floor is necessary at the moment. I don't believe the hydraulic lift is needed at this exact moment. And it, the skid, same thing. Putting the lines on, on the highways, maybe is. That might be considered an emergency, but I'm not sure. Leasing quotes for municipal vehicles in the tune of $329,000. I mean, we must be the poorest community going to constantly be out there borrowing money to run our vehicles. I know, Harford's worse than we are. But the fact <coughs> remains, this is not necessary. These, these diving blocks, $30,000 for, and I just averaged, you know, rounded off. That's a tremendous amount of money. $400,000 grant for pedestrian and bicycle improvements. Some in this town put a sign up right near my house that says bicycle path. Who cares? I hate that sign. I don't know why nobody came and told me you were gonna put it in there. But it's saying the road down the street is a bicycle path. But the fact is, this, you've got too many items and you have items on here that you shouldn't even be talking about until we really know what our bottom line is coming from the state of Connecticut. As we go through the state of Connecticut and we look at the mail, uh, the news that keeps coming out, Hartford's, Hartford struggles with junk bonds. Well, they've been struggling for a long time. S&P, um, Moody's. They've hammered them now. And they should have been hammering them a couple years ago. But politically speaking, they couldn't do it. Because we know who owns the rating agencies. And now they're so bad, they have to do something. And, 
and 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 our and you know they keep downgrading them, and we're going to get downgraded eventually ourselves. And then they're doing their re re redevelopment also on Albany Avenue, which is a disgrace, a waste of money. Like we're wasting our money on a lot of things as well, and. Um, I don't know, I don't know, Mayor, where we're all coming from, but I'll tell you this. Uh, we have to tighten our belts and be very conservative in how we spend. I believe that uh, all, all, all of this, all of this money that we're hearing about now that wants to be, that we want, that some citizens want to have spent is wrong. And please consider the fact that our turn is coming up just like Hartford. I see my water bill increase. Not that I use more water, but I do see it increasing and these eternal life programs. Now, at the last meeting, you did have a, a discussion regarding the, the 12 years worth of bonds that were sitting out there and how you were gonna refinance them. I remember Mr. Mr. Rell made a comment. Do we have a plan for that $40,000 a year? Remember that? And he asked you, Mayor, and you said you had no idea what you're gonna spend the money on. No, you didn't say that. Yes, he did say that. If he said he doesn't above, know where they're gonna spend the money. If we got above the 40,000 that was anticipated in the budget. Yeah. And we did. We got $6,000 for next year more than we anticipated. And that will be saved in the debt service fund to pay following year's debt service. Where's the 40,000 that you were talking about? It was, it was savings that we anticipated in the development of this year's budget, mm -hmm. so it's already spoken for. Oh, it's already spoken for. Yeah. We reduced the budget by that amount, knowing we were going to refund those bonds. Okay, well, I, I had an idea where you could spend that money. Just like Mr. Rell had ideas where we could spend any of that rate. money, too. We spent it to lower the tax rate. You spent it to lower the tax rate. Well, that's wonderful. You know what you could do? You, you, you could reduce the budget. That's what we did. Well, no, reduce it more. When, when, when you settle up with the state of Connecticut and give us all a tax break, something uh, that's never happened in this town. But thank you very much. Uh, I'll be back. George. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I was going to start my comments with an R, but the doctor said I didn't have to wear an eye patch, so. But I still can't see too well, so you're all a little fuzzy to me. <laughs> I got two, uh, George A. Rue 956 Cloverdale Circle, just so people know who I am. Uh, a couple of positive comments. About two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, I woke up one morning and I see this activity outside of the house. And I was really pleasantly surprised. I was surprised, but a little disappointed. I thought you'd all be out there with a big red ribbon and the high school band would be out there playing God Save America or Make America Great Again or something like that. I say that in jest, but in any event, uh, I just wanted to share with you my observations. It's been, it's been a very entertaining, no, a very good learning experience. I've been watching people work, which I've done a large part of my, during much of my life and working career, and I, I can only say to the manager in this case, and I don't always agree with him, and Derek, who I don't know all that well, I think you got a, I think we have a good contractor on that job. They, I notice a level of diligence. I notice a level of skill that's being applied. I notice as I have learned what some of the steps were in this particular process, and I see the thing going along well. I'd just like to share that from a positive perspective with those of you who finally got it done before I died. I didn't think I was gonna make it, but I'm sure of that I will, okay? On another, on another more serious vein is, um, you all know I've been a little bit concerned about what's happening in Washington vis-a-vis. -vis. I'm worried more about that than I worry about some of the things happening here locally and in Connecticut. And one of the things, there's a lot of things that have caught my attention, but one of them has been this request by Trump and company to release the voter records. 
And I thought, yeah, that sounds like Nazi Germany or Russia or someplace like that. It didn't sound like America to me. You all know, well, most of you know, that I was a, a moderator at the voting polls for many, many years. And I took that, I took that job very seriously. I took it, a very, it was a very serious and important job that had to be done. And the crap, if you'll pardon the vernacular, that seems to be coming out of Washington about voter fraud is just that. In all of the years that I was moderator, most of the time when there was a problem, it was a problem in the name spelling or someone didn't have an ID and we were able to work it out or they moved and forgot to say they live now on Cloverdale Circle vis-a-vis -vis Fox Hill Road or some other place like that. Honest mistakes that came about as it, from, a, from a process that perhaps was the, not as sophisticated as it perhaps could, could have been or should have been. So in any event, my question, my question is, as you all know, I think practically 48 of the 50 states have said they're not going to comply with this at all. And I'm not sure, and I'm just looking for an answer. And, and, and I, I have a hard time reading the paper these days without my little fancy binoculars here. Uh, is do the registrars of voters in our town, do they have the authority on their own to be able to forward that information somehow through the system to go to Washington? That's my one question. And I don't know whether there's an easy answer to it. It's a yes or a no. I'm not sure. We'll find out for George. Yeah, I, I would. If, if, it, if it is the latter, I would be very, very concerned. My recollection was that I thought, and I, I commented on, on, on a subject similar to this some time back about, uh, uh, well, it was not sanctuary city, so cooperating with the, uh, with the Homeland Security or something that the governor didn't uh, suggest that we do that. And I, if my memory serves me, I believe that he said the state of Connecticut was not going to comply with that, but I don't know. And what worries me, or what concerns me, and these are things you stop and sort of think about from time to time, is uh, if, it's, if it's local or if it's state control. Well, what concerns me is that the registrars of voters, and I know them reasonably well, and I've known them all in the past, but of all of the elected officials in town, who we can speak to here, I believe, and I think I'm saying this correctly, they can be elected. If nobody votes for them all except two people, they get elected. So if my memory serves me, if I'm, if I'm interpreting this correctly, they're not really elected by the, voter, by the voters at large or by the majority of voters at large, and if they do, it's a functionary uh, uh, result. So tied in with that, I think I've conveyed my concerns. I'd like to know how and if we as a town will comply with that or if they can comply with that. That's my biggest concern. Can they do it on their own? And if they can, I'd strongly suggest that we start taking a doggone close look at what the heck we're sharing with our friend in Washington. With that, I thank you. Almost didn't come tonight. Jim Woodworth, uh, 33 Mill Street. Almost didn't come tonight since I thought applying for a 400,000, potential $400,000 grant with no match was a no-brainer. But uh, anyway, uh, that, uh, well, I, I, went down, I went past uh, the, the ice cream shop under new management, and you should have seen the people the other night. And uh, it's such a wonderful thing, but they're going to need... Uh, a lot of walking, a lot of biking to work that ice cream off. And the better that uh, the more bike walk friendly Old Wethersfield is and hopefully spreading out to more of the town it is a really good thing. And, and uh, as I was thinking, what person would be against something like that? I would say idiot, but I don't want to make this personal. Uh, would be against something like that. But let's, you know, it, it's even good for economic development. 
as well as public health and the quality of our environment. So go for it. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Hi, I'm Casey White, 91 Center Street. And like many people here tonight, I want to um, show my support for approving authorization to apply for the connectivity grant. I think it is well worth our town's internal resources to apply for money from the state to improve on our existing asset, which is our built infrastructure. I moved to others field because it was a walkable, sane landscape. Um, which doesn't exist in a lot of places anymore. I moved here from a city. I know a lot of people moved here for the same reason. And a lot of people still live here because they grew up here and they love that about the town. Um, I, I looked at the enclosures in the agenda tonight, the 2008 um, master plan and the 2015 Hanmer School Safe Walk Audit. And those were interesting to look at, especially the 2008 plan because I was able to notice improvements that had been made um, that were recommended in that plan, um, which was drawn up before I moved here. Um, so I think that's wonderful, and I think the improvements that still need to be made from that plan would be wonderful. I think going forward, it would be great to update that plan and create one that includes the entire community. Um, Old Weathers Field is wonderful. I love it. I live here. Um, but beyond tourism and beyond enjoying the streets for pleasure. There are real basic ways that we could improve the infrastructure of the town for people who live here and who work here and visit here, um, especially people who are lower income or who are in communities of color who take the buses, and I see them on Silas Dean because they either can't drive for whatever reason or um, they can't afford it. And connecting Silas Dean with our neighborhoods would benefit everybody. Um, I have a friend who wrote in a comment tonight that said she would like to see a pedestrian path to the post office that goes through Old Weathers Field. There's not even a crosswalk to the post office right now. And that's a really basic a service that people in the community use. Um, so I would like to see um, a supply for the grant, and I'd like to see us move forward with um, kind of, an, you know, 10 years out, another revisit of our pedestrian and cycling plan. Um, and also, I'm not personally a big cyclist, but in the master plan, there's not much mention of cycling. And um, th it does mention narrowing streets and calming traffic and reducing the pavement at certain intersections, which were mentioned on the agenda item tonight, like um, State and Main Street, which is truly a not great place to cross the street. Um, and if improvements are being made, bike lanes should be put in. And ideally, there should be a physical barrier between the car lane and the cycling lane. A painted line is not going to make me feel particularly safe. Um, it's not going to make me feel safe really having my child ride on that. And I read somewhere someone saying that if a child is not going to feel safe riding in a bike lane, nobody's going to feel safe riding in it. And that's a pretty basic idea that I, I feel is true for myself. Um, we spend a lot of money creating infrastructure for cars. That's great. A lot of us use them and need them. But we also can give a portion of that attention and planning to, um, to other modes of transportation, especially when we're already doing projects. Um, if we're reducing street lanes, we don't just need to landscape um, the deep paved area. We can make it a useful alternate mode of transportation for people. So um, I'm excited for this possibility, and I hope we can move forward to really capitalize on um, a really wonderful part of Weathers Field that draws residents and I think will continue to draw more business in immediately and also really subtly over the long term. And that's a wonderful investment for our town. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Other public comment? Uh, my name is Jim Culpa. I live at 239 Crest Street, and uh, I'd like to speak in favor of a couple of agenda items. The first is the diving blocks. My children are on Barracuda swim team, and I get to see firsthand just how much use the diving blocks get, so I'd like to speak in favor of those. I'd also like to speak in favor of the community connectivity grant. Uh, with one addition, though, uh, possibly some additional sidewalk east along Marsh Street 
toward the Putnam Bridge. Uh, I also work in town at the uh, office building that's right next to the Putnam Bridge. So I'll go for a walk at lunch into Old Weathersfield, go get a sandwich, but it's a little, because of the traffic volumes, it's a little uncomfortable walking on Marsh Street. And I noticed that a lot of people that work in that building just do laps in the parking lot. So if we can get some of those people off of that property into Old Weathersfield, I think that would be beneficial. So, and then also the, the Putnam Bridge Trail too, to make a connection to that. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Okay, thank you. Council reports? Tony? <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> last week there was an EDIC meeting. We got an updated stat status on all the uh, vacant property. Uh, the EDIC Finance Committee is working on updating the uh, tax incentive policy to bring in compliance with all the state changes that have occurred since our last policy was updated in 2004. Uh, we're told the restaurant at Putnam Park uh, is uh, moving forward. They're uh, working on the deck right now, and they have to open to have the restaurant open sometime in the September time frame. And uh, the Chamber of Commerce right now is working on a uh, August 10th uh, night at the Yard Goats, if anybody's interested in joining cha Chamber members at that event. Thanks, Tony. Donna? Um, I attended the Shade Tree Commission meeting last Monday. They continue to do an awful lot of work with um, tree review and some removal due to aging and damage. Um, but they're very thoughtful in their discussions related to those trees and uh, continue to work really hard and, do, and cooperate um, with Newington. Thank you, Donna. Amy? I attended, <coughs> excuse me, I attended the library board meeting uh, a few things. July is Food for Fines month, so if you have overdue materials, instead of paying your um, dime a day fine, you can bring in a food item. The summer reading programs are underway at the library, and also the air conditioning has been an ongoing issue in the library, um, and there's a part that is on order, I believe, still in order. It was delivered and installed today. Wonderful. The air conditioning had been out in part of the building and so the hours were um, the library had closed early a couple times and the lights had been out a couple times a couple days as well um, so I want to thank the library employees for having to endure those conditions on those hot and humid days thank you other council reports council comments council comments Wow, okay. Jeff? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Just a couple things. Um, KERMA has uh, given us their equity distribution, and this is based upon the 15-16 plan year. So we got a check today for $71,000, which is basically return on premium. Uh, they distributed $5 million to uh, statewide to all their customers. Uh, our share was $71,000. The new tanks at physical services were delivered Friday, and they've begun installation. Um, as you heard from George, Cloverdale Pond is underway. Uh, Catone Field is underway. Also last week, I had a chance to visit at the Webb Dean Stevens house. They had an archeological dig on their site where they're gonna put their new building. They found a 1632 coin, which proves we are the oldest town in <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> so there it is, proof. Um, on your podium this evening are letters in support of the connectivity grant, the ones that we've received. Um, uh, and I had a chance last week to visit with Kelstrom uh, over on Church Street. It was their 75th anniversary. Hmm. So it was a pretty good visit with them and interesting work they do. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything, Dolores? Uh, we did 1,540 dogs registered. Uh, the manager signed the contract that you approved for the state library grant. Denise Merrill did send out a letter saying that she is not uh, going to co cooperate with uh, releasing any of the uh, state voter registration records. That's it. Thank you. 
Um, you'll, will you get an answer, Dolores, on that secondary question that uh, was asked that, by yeah, George? Denise Merrill said she wasn't doing it. So, uh, yes, I have but, it in writing. Which but one? in terms of the registrars here locally cannot oh, okay. override that, just to, or I assume they can't in my imagination, but um, maybe you can verify that for George. <clears throat> okay, move into council action. I don't believe there are any resignations. There are a bunch of appointments, so I'll start with the motion or provide the following names. I'll start with uh, Tony. I think it's a longer list, so we'll let you go first. Okay. Uh, to the Assessment Appeals Board, alternate Brent Owen, 42 Wells Farm Drive, 7117 to 63020. Uh, to the Building Board of Appeals, alternate Steve Andrea, 430 Main Street, uh, period 7117 to 63020. Craig S. Penny, 341 Church Street for the same time frame. Capital Improvements Advisory Commission, Michael Grabowski, 46 Westway, 7117 to 63019. Robert Turjan, 962 Cloverdale Circle for the same time period. Central Connecticut Health District, John Aphorismo, 185 Broad Street, 717, uh, 7117 to 63020. Uh, municipal Agent for uh, uh, Children for the Town, uh, Erica Texera, 505 Silestine Highway, our uh, town employee, uh, for the period 7117 to 63019. Uh, Connecticut River Assembly, Joseph M. Smith, 83 Apple Hill Road, 7117 to 63020. Uh, Design Review uh, Advisory Committee, Bruce T. Boxstall, the chairman, for the, uh, from 10 Pasture Lane, from 7117 to 63020. Fladoric Hima, from 136 Bunce Road, same time period. Alternate, Richard Sitnik. Uh, 27 Deer Ledge Lane, same time frame. Uh, Weddesfield Advisory Commission for People with Disabilities. Barbara Bajewski, 4 Tap Shape Court, Apartment 1, 7117 to 63019. Rio Ray Lampro, 108 Meadowview Drive, same time frame. Sue Buckland, 766 Wilkett Hill Road, same time frame. Uh, municipal agent for uh, elderly. Christine Taylor, a town employee, 505 Silestine Highway for the period 7117 to 63019. Historic District Commission, uh, Jennifer Wolf, 345 Walkett Hill Road, 7117 to 63022. Alternate, John Aphorismo, 185 uh, Broad Street, 7117 to 63020. Uh, Human Rights and Relations Commission, Maria Alfonso, 256 Brimfield Road, 7117 to 63020. Marianne Wardick, 51 Ridgecrest Circle, same time frame. To fill vacancies, Deborah Cohen, 73 Church Street, same time frame. Jason Goddard, 8C Barrington Drive, 7117 to 63018. Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission, James uh, Koopa, 239 Crest Street, 7117 to 63020. Clark Nelson, 34 Farms Village Road, same time frame. As an alternate, Joseph M. Smith, 83 Apple Hill Road, same time frame. Library Board of Directors, Doreen Ciarcia, 194 Garden Street, 7117 to 63020. Parks and Rec Board, Dan Silbo, 59 Apple Hill, 7117 to 63020. Personnel Appeal Boards, Jason Goddard, 8C Barrington Drive, 7117 to 63020. Planning and Zoning Commission, Thomas A. Harley, the Chairman, 289 Cedar Street, 7117 <coughs> to 63020. Anthony J. Homicki, 201 Cumberland Avenue, same time frame. Thomas R. Dean, 33 McMullen Avenue, same time frame. Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, Kathy Bagley, Park and Rec Department, 505 Silestine Highway, 7117 to 63019. Lisa Gallipo, Senior Center Coordinator, 
505 Silestine Highway, same time frame. Kathy Lieberman, the chairman uh, from the Housing Authority, 60 Lancaster Road, 7117 to 63019. Claire A. Meehan for Health and Medical from 34 Two Brook Road, same time frame. Joseph M. Meehan at large, same uh, location, 34 Two Brook Road, same time frame. Uh, Shade Creek Commission, Melissa Wagner Pavic. 85 Wells Farm Road, 7117 to 63020. Solomon Wells House Committee, Annie R. Doyle, 269 Wilkin Hill Road, 7117 to 63020. Teresa Rose Urbanski, 46 Marmor Court, same time frame. Tree Warden, Corey Christians, uh, town employee from the town garage, who's also the town arborist, 7117 to 63018. The Youth Advisory Board, Marissa Alfonso, 256 Brimfield Road, 7117 to 63020. Colleen Keehan, 99 Wells Road, same time frame. Ken Lesser, 8 Hawthorne Way, same time frame. Aileen Candles, 106 Walken Hill Lane, 7117 to 63020. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or concerns? Mike no, I just to go back, Tony, on a couple of them. No, I'm just joking. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> Need a drink of water after that. Set the bar hard for Mike. Hey, you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you, Tony. Mike Curley? Okay, appointments. Uh, Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, Joanne Haynes, Chair. 516 Highland Street and Elaine Zeeler, 39 Old Mill Road, both 7117 to 630, 2019. Board of Ethics, James Pelletier, 61 State Street, 7117 to 630, 2020. Human Rights and Relations Commission, Mark Colmaz, 37 Old Pewter Lane, Barbara J. Rue, 79 Main Street, Alternate Mark Townsend, 38 McMullen Avenue, all 7117 to 630, 2020. Insurance Committee, Thomas Fitzpatrick, 40 Whipperwill Way, 7117 to 630, 2022. Library Board of Directors, Mary Pelletier, 61 State Street, Terry Santapalo, 131 Carriage Hill Drive, both 7117 to 630, 2020. Personnel Appeals Board, George Cody, 131 Charter Road, 7117 to 630, 2020. <coughs> Solomon Wells House Committee, Mary Mahar, 24 Perkins Row, 7117 to 630, 630, 2020. Zoning Board of Appeals, move from alternate, Mary Pelletier, 61 State Street, State Street 7117 to 630, 2020. Second. Thank you, a motion and a second, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to move into action B2A. I'd like to make a motion to accept the bid from Calvert Safe and Lock, including alternate number one, for $49,448. Second. Motion and second, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. This item was tabled at the last meeting awaiting further information from uh, the Board of Ed, which has been provided, other than uh, Mr. Bush was unable to find uh, outside ratings for the different um, products. So he did get warranty information and the other information. Also, there's a memo from the town attorney on the matter. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, questions from council on this? I know Mr. Bush is here. Yes. For that, I read through it all. Your questions. Questions? No questions. Okay. Assume everybody's reviewed the documentation on it. So we have a motion and a second in front of us. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. New business. Three A. Motion to approve resolution authorizing the town manager to apply for and administer community connectivity grant application in an amount not to exceed $400,000. Second. Motion 
a second. Um, I'll ask Peter to discuss this tonight. If we can just change the motion to, uh, instead of a, a resolution, just a motion, because resolutions are a different, different breed of item in this town. Okay. Please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Town Councilors, Town Manager of Bridges. Uh, you should have received a, a summary uh, agenda item memo, as well as a couple of attachments, which were mentioned uh, earlier, a copy of the 2015 uh, Hamner School Safe Walk Audit, and the 2008 Old Weathersfield Master Plan, which provides uh, quite a bit of detail on the specific uh, projects um, that we would like to pursue the funding for. As was mentioned in the agenda item, uh, there is no cost other than the town staff uh, efforts that would be put into the uh, administration of the grant and the submission of the grant. Uh, we have asked for the uh, authority to apply for the maximum amount of the grant, which is $400,000. Uh, we do not believe that the improvements listed in those two reports will get us to that point. However, we are working through those cost estimates right now, so we wanted the flexibility, uh, if needed, to apply for the maximum. Um, uh, we've uh, put together a whole listing of what I would call safety and traffic calming and bike and pedestrian uh, improvements, uh, which we think uh, will make the uh, environment in Old Weathersfield much more conducive uh, to not only uh, pedestrian safety, but um, uh, bicycle improvements, which we have not focused on up till this point. Uh, there is uh, There are a series of bike lanes uh, in Old Weathersfield, which uh, many people are probably not even aware of. Uh, they're not identified very well. There are very little to no, no pavement markings. Uh, so uh, this grant would, would maybe allow us to do some of that for uh, the first time. There are signs uh, out there in the field. Uh, we will be looking at those to see if they need to be moved uh, as it relates to the pavement improvements. So we will be doing that at the same time. Um, so I, I think that kind of summarizes the, the intent of what we would like the authority to apply for funds. I'd be happy to answer any specific questions you might have about any, any of the improvements that we listed in the, um, in the documentation. Very good. Questions for Peter on this? Tony? Uh, <clears throat> Peter, looking at the list, I see uh, both uh, Hartford Avenue and Main Street and uh, State and Main Street are on the list, and those are the last two of the three-part project we were looking on getting completed with Church Street and Main being the first. Uh, Priority-wise, are those near the top of the list if you don't get full funding to be done first to finish that, or what is your priority? that you and Derek have come up with on this? Definitely those two uh, intersections would be at the top of the list. Um, you know, we would put a, uh, all of the projects in the pot uh, as a comprehensive set of improvements rather than individual projects. So I think uh, if the DOT, you know, contacted us and wanted us to prioritize, we could certainly do that. But I think those intersections uh, would certainly be at the top, top of the list. Um, you know, and you heard some public comment tonight about why we think those would be at the top of the list. Okay, thank you. Amy? I don't have a question, but I would like to just say that as a walker in Old Weathersfield, there are definitely some intersections that could use um, some help, so I am in support of this. I also think it's wonderful that 100% of the construction would be paid for in this grant and that all the design work can be done in-house, so there wouldn't be um, you know, any funds spent by the town and that's very unusual most of the time we have to put in a, a mandatory percentage or an in-kind service or something along those lines so it's uh, refreshing to see that as well great thank you mike Rowe. thank you peter uh, along the same lines somebody had mentioned about um, putnam park and going to uh, east on route three Putnam Bridge, what is the status of that? So that is in design right now, um, um, a combination of uh, an outside consultant that the DOT has hired as well as their in-house design team. Uh, we've had some preliminary conversations. Most of the work would be done on the Glastonbury side. However, they would touch down on the Weathersfield side. Um, so that is going through that process right now. Uh, so there is money to design it. Uh, the funding for the actual work obviously uh, would still need to be pursued as the design evolves and they figure out what the costs are with that. It's a, a 
critically important link to get across the river. Um, and, um, you know, we will be part of that conversation pretty soon. So we have had some initial, you know, contact with, with the group that's leading the design team. Um, the costs to do sidewalks and other things to connect to the bridge are significant, would probably exceed this $400,000. So we sort of held off on, on that. Uh, plus, you would have to go under Marsh and work mm -hmm. with the DOT. So we, we didn't want to get too uh, far into that until we see what the final design. There were, there's different ideas on where to touch down on our side of the river. So we didn't want to jump the gun on that uh, with this particular grant. This particular grant supposedly will will uh, be available in future years for us to maybe apply for a bigger project uh, or we could maybe piggyback on the work that the DOT is doing and get some of the improvements on our side of the river uh, included in that. I think that remains to be seen, but I think that would probably make a lot more sense for us. Great. Thank you. But it is an important uh, link in the, in the chain. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. On um, the gentleman that walks from Putnam Plaza, I can't even believe he walks from Putnam Plaza. That's a little scary over there. Um, so is there plans to do something? I mean, that building, some people ask me if that building's even in Weathersfield. Mm -hmm. It is in Weathersfield. Is there any plans to kind of connect it so all those <coughs> people can get easy, easier into Weathersfield? That road is part of the Heritage Bicycle Trail, the Heritage Way, they call it. Um, although you wouldn't probably know it, there's, there's a sign or two here or there. So certainly um, the, the, the pavement uh, is such that there are uh, controls, guardrails uh, right at the edge and then they slope down. So when I said earlier that the costs to do sidewalk and that kind of thing would outweigh this grant by a significant margin. So uh, that would take a lot of analysis and a lot of planning and permitting and things like that. So however, there are, you know, pavement markings for, for the bike trail and things like that, that could certainly be done. It's not going to uh, make it safer for pedestrians, but for cyclists, it certainly might be an interim solution. Um, but it would take uh, a, a lot more work than I think this funding source would be able to take care of. But uh, nevertheless, I think it, it certainly should be. Uh, one thing we don't have in town, and uh, not advocating for it right now, but we, we don't have a real comprehensive bicycle and pedestrian plan. We did the plan of development back in so almost five years ago now. Um, it speaks to bicycle improvements, but we don't have a documented plan with the roads and the networks throughout town. So that's something that we, we certainly need to maybe take some time and step back and, and do that kind of planning now. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Just a question. I'm assuming that this is a competitive grant? Very competitive. Okay, thank you. I was just going to follow up on what Mike and, and Mike were talking about. It would seems to be that we should tr do what we can to come up with a plan to connect, obviously, a lot of people who work in that office building to Old Weathersfield um, and not just work on connecting them to Glastonbury. So right. heading over to Weathersfield, at least uh, I think Casey mentioned we should. We've had past plans, and the next plan we should make that a, a priority, priority from a planning standpoint. Anyway. Definitely. Very good. Seeing no other questions, we have a motion and a second for the application of the grant. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? No? Thank you. Three B. Motion to approve the transfer of six thousand dollars from the contingency account to the social and youth services payroll account. Second. Motion is second. Uh, Jeff? Yes. Um, the agenda form was missed, was out of order in the packet, so a copy of the agenda form is on the dais tonight. Uh, basically, this is the WEC position, which we put in the contingency fund because there was some discussion up until the adoption of the budget. So rather than the 10000 that was in the contingency, uh, Director Bagley is only asking for six. Okay. Questions about that for Kathy or yeah. Erica? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. So why don't we wait till the end of the year to see if we can our can be covered it is this is last year's money oh last year this, this is, is last year's 17. money yeah. okay so we need this yeah they'd or be short in their budget they'd be short in their budget what about the overall town though we're we're okay we, at the next meeting in august you'll see all the the regular transfers and true ups but they submitted this one for their budget this time 
Why don't we wait till then to see you how can, it's all moving around? They just around. processed it. No. Because I'm thinking maybe it doesn't have to come out of. Uh, it doesn't have to come out of there. Maybe there's an offset in another area. Of their budget? No, not in their budget, but the overall town budget. Okay. Well, we had put the money in contingency direct specifically for this. No, I get that. But if there's other money available, why wouldn't we just wait and then look at the whole thing to see if it can just be transferred from somewhere else? Following up on that, uh, that question, um, with this item, and I think folks in the audience mentioned it too, I think we should focus on the items that are critical from a timing standpoint. There's some things obviously on the agenda tonight, but I think all of us will have some questions about does this need to be done with the uncertainty of our budget? Well, this is money. State budget. This is money already spent from last fiscal year. So this is to true up the park and rec budget. This one is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unlike the others, which are going to be right. appropriations for the next year. <clears throat> yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate that for the next uh, couple items, perhaps, uh, that we should discuss that, whether it's necessary to make the decision right now before we know what the overall state budget is. So it may be prudent to wait on some of these things. Okay. I actually just had a clarification question. Um, within the packet, it looked like it was a different um, explanation. Yeah, it, it calls itself, what is, you want to? There, you there was just talk? an explanation in our packet that it was in the budget, then it got rein, it wasn't, and then it got reinstated in the state budget, and so there's just a little confusion. I think, I think you're on C, we're on B. No, I know what we're talking about. Okay. Because this, this one's not in the state budget. <coughs> so maybe it was just out of order? Is that what you were saying earlier? Yeah, there was a sheet out of order, and I put the sheet for the budget transfer on the dais tonight. Because the online one just had the, the state referenced one. Yeah. There was a... There should have been an agenda form in front of the budget transfer form. I put one of those on your dais tonight because it got out of order in the packet. Got it. Okay. Did that answer yours, Joey? Yes. Okay. okay. So we have a motion and a second on this contingency fund from last year's budget. Uh, motion and a second for in front of us. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Notes. You got that, Dolores? Yes. Any abstentions? Thank you. Now be C. Make a motion to authorize Jeff Bridges, town manager, to make, execute, and approve on behalf of the town of Wethersfield a contract between the State Department of Education and the town of Wethersfield Department of Social and Youth Services. Said contract shall be in an amount up to $27,837 each year for contributions to program services within the Youth Services Bureau for the fiscal years 2017 through 2019. Second. Chuck. I'll ask Kathy Bagley to okay. review this one with you. Good evening. This grant is we were t originally when we did our budget process, we weren't sure whether or not we'd be asked to apply for this grant because of the state budget. And recently they got back to us and said to go ahead and apply. This grant, one of them is the $21,000, which is for the Youth Services uh, Bureau in our department that um, helps to go towards the salary of our um, youth development manager. We've had this every year for many years through the state and originally we didn't think we would be able to apply and they said, they came back and said, uh, go ahead, we're looking for you to apply again. So right now it'll still be up in the year, but they're asking us to put in a grant application for the Youth Service Bureau grant for the 21,000. And then the $6,100 is an enhancement grant of the Youth Service Bureau grant. And they say, asked us to put in for that one also. So, um, and we've gotten that one in past years. Thank you. Questions about that? I, obviously this, unlike the remaining items that we're gonna be coming up for bid, is subject to, to grant acceptance and funding from the state, which will take care of itself 
relative to whether or not those funds will become available based on the on the, the, the state budget passage or lack thereof. So this allows us to be in play in the event those funds become available, unlike other expenditures that may or may not be subject to some discussion tonight. Questions about this from the council? Amy? Kathy, have you had discussions about how you'll fund this position if these <coughs> monies are not available? The, the position is currently funded in the budget. This money, if it came in, would go to the town revenue. Okay. So it's not a position, it's for the, de the department? Yes, it would come in. It helps support the Youth Service Bureau. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Can you, can you just describe what this person would do? Uh, the person currently is on staff, and um, he's our youth development manager, so he handles all the after-school programs at the middle school. It's a split position. There's the youth service side, so that's half of the time that is in the youth services department, and the other half of the time it's in the parks and rec department for the operation of the nature center. And in the youth service side of the budget, it's all the after school programs at the middle school. He oversees the police and youth grant that we have. Am I missing? He works with a lot of the prevention programs as well. And he sits on the youth um, advisory board. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. No other questions? Okay. Motion is second for grant application authorization for Jeff. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I know you're going to be ready for the next one. Um, we're moving to bids 4A. I'd like to make a motion to purchase the 2000 Dusky boat as recommended by the Park and Recreation Department for $11,500 paid for out of the Cove Preservation Fund and authorizing its use by the Harbor Master upon formal agreement of condition of use. Second. Kathy? Uh, we're looking to replace the existing boat that we do have. Um, we've been looking at used boats that are on the market through um, both internet and um, locally. So we've been going out and looking at a variety of them. We've looked at different ones. Uh, we did this process because we're looking at used boats. And when I spoke with the finance director about how best to do that, he had suggested looking at the what we would call the blue book of cars. There's also within that blue book of cars, there's a blue book for um, boats also. So we've been comparing it to that and looking at it. The reason we're looking to replace the boat is both for the Harbor Master and the Park and Rec Department. We oversee the Cove operation and we have to monitor and maintain the moorings that are out there, check the boats keep an eye on our docks and kind of keep an eye on the boat traffic in the cove. So that's why we're looking to replace the current boat that we're not using. It's not seaworthy at this time. Questions, Don? And that boat that is not seaworthy was the one donated by MDC? Is that correct? Um, no, well, yes and it's no. Both. Yeah. Both. Our original whaler is unseaworthy, and the MDC one, the, the trailer in the motor was fine, but the MDC boat, the, it's, it's starting to split, um, and it was a lot of work to put it back in the water. So we refinished the Hartford whaler, or the whaler, um, and then it got damaged again, so. How did it get damaged again? Um, water's on the inside, not the outside. How did that happen? Um, yeah. Um, we're, we think it, the way it was used, and also it's 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 a, a it's a very old boat to begin with. It goes back probably fifty, maybe thirty years. Fifty is probably too many. Probably thirty years, and uh, we've we've been repairing it over the years. So if it takes nicks and and scrapes. There's not a lot there to support it anymore. Mm -hmm. And the inside fiberglass keeps getting wet. What's and, go ahead. No, I was going to say we brought it to a boat company over the winter to get it um, looked at and give us a report on what could we do to fix it. 
and both the boat and the motor, they said the amount of money you would put in, you're better off looking at another boat. That was their recommendation. We'd be too, putting too much money into a boat that wouldn't be seaworthy for many years. What, what's being used now? We're not using a boat now. Is there an opportunity to share a boat? No. Why not? Um, those boats are specifically designed for trained firefighters and trained police officers. Um, they have emergency uh, services equipment on them, so they're not available for park and rec use. Is there an opportunity for a parks and rec person to hop on board with a fire or police department person who could navigate the boat? Given that the fire department's volunteer and the police don't have a set maritime division, it has to be a police officer you pull in from somewhere else. So we have two boats just sitting there and a parks and rec department who needs to have navigation? It's the park and rec boat is used primarily by the harbor master. Is there any other way to check the moorings and the docks and the things that you need to check? The, um, the way we did it this year was to ask the fire department if they could help us out one Saturday just to go out there. Um, and it was, it's always contingent on whether or not they get called out for something, whether it be a fire call or a boat call. So um, we were able to do that, but that's always hit or miss with them. But, but they were, um, they were um, cooperated with us to help us get out there at the beginning of the season, but we haven't done any patrols or anything since. Do, Kathy, do we, uh, or does the Harbor Master uh, support any other services if there's a distress on the Connecticut River or in um, the Cove itself, do we? provide or does the harbor master provide any you know life-saving or anything like that at all no that would be police or fire they're not trained to do life-saving i mean if a boat ran out of gas mm -hmm. they could help the boat but it wouldn't be anything of a life-saving nature i mean if they happen to be on the water they can make the call for assistance but um they wouldn't be the, the first responder does the harbor master go up and down the Connecticut River at all, provide service for you know the 4th of July fireworks or anything like that that go along the riverfront? That wouldn't be our intent for, the, for moving forward with the boat at this time. We pretty much want to look at staying in the cove and taking care of our business. Mm -hmm. They have the authority to be out in the river. We're not looking to do that with the boat at this time. Okay. And then maybe this is a question for Jeff. Is the harbor master, is that a position in our charter, town charter? No, this is a uh, uh, state position and reports to the Harbor Management Commission. Okay. Are we required to have a harbor master? I, I don't know. Uh, it, um, it's a government appointment, governor appointment, so. Um, it's just for harbors up and down the, co the river and the coast that they look at that. I don't know whether or not there's a requirement for it. It's been appointed um, all the years that I've been here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, how much patrolling does the harbor master do when we do have a boat that's in working order? How they, often does he go out and what is he patrolling exactly? They go out on the weekends and if it would be the 4th of July or a holiday weekend, a Memorial Day weekend, Labor Day, anytime we thought there'd be a lot of boating traffic. And they're helping to control the boat speed, the um, watching for the safety of the water in the cove, because we have the boats with the motors, we have kayaks, we have canoes out there. And they do a lot of, look, of slowing boating traffic down in the cove and uh, making sure that people um, to have the right license and things of that nature so that they can use the boat. So they're authorized by the state to do those, that kind of um, patrolling. Do we collect any um, fines? No. That, that's through the police department. And have you had any problems this year with the harbor master not being in the cove? 
they've mentioned to me that they go down and kind of watch the boat launchings and, and make sure people are launching properly and know those kind of things and let them know that they're in the area and kind of keep an eye on it. And they say, you know, the traffic, uh, the boating traffic and the jet skis that are out there, it's just when they come in, they'll tell them you're going too fast or something like that. They said it's, it's a lot easier doing it when you're on the water because now you're waiting for the, the jet ski or the boat to come in. Since we voted to um, eliminate the fee for kayakers, uh, have we seen more boaters on um, the cove, more kayakers, more uh, recreational um, vessels? Yes, in terms of the ki kayaks and the canoes, yes, they've come. We've got groups that'll come and launch from there and go out and enjoy the river and come back. Mm -hmm. And some of them will just uh, kayak around the cove and that'll be, they'll enjoy that. So, uh, yeah, we have seen that increase. Definitely, okay, thanks. Paul? I'm sorry, Just a go. question to Cap. Could you explain to us a little bit more about the Cove, Cove Preservation Fund and what it can be used for and, you know, just give us a little bit more background sure, for those that don't necessarily know. The Cove Preservation Fund was set up by the town council um, and it, it came about because boaters were paying a fee uh, to launch, as they do today, and they weren't seeing a lot of uh, any improvements going on down at the Cove, and they wondered where all their boating fees were going. So Council uh, set up this, uh, this fund that allows the boating fees to go into the Cove Preservation Fund, and that fund is used for the improvement and maintenance of the Cove, the water, and Cove Park. So it takes in the whole area. And over the years, we've used that fund to do maintenance uh, work in Cove Park, clearing the, um, the bank of all the debris and, and things and, and cutting down the bushes and things that were just the overgrowth. We just recently used it as a match for our new docks that are down there at the Cove, where, where we have an application in for a new boat launch ramp that we were able to um, put up a cash match for that. So it's we've been able to use over the years those funds to go right back into that area to improve it. And it's always with the Cove Preservation Fund to spend, um, to spend large amounts of money. We always have to come to council for, their, for your approval. Yearly, how much does the uh, Cove Preservation Fund take in? I know we're at about $300,000 right now. It takes in approximately 20000 a year if you did an average. Uh, last summer it was higher because it never rained, so everybody was out boating all the time, so that was probably around twenty four, dollars 25000 But if you were to look at an average, we're, we're like between eighteen dollars and twenty five. dollars So we've been around average of 20000 mm -hmm. and we've been saving it because we've been trying to do the new docks yeah. and mm -hmm. the boat launch ramp. Yep. So that was one of the reasons. That's why it's been growing, because the boat launch ramp estimate is like a half a million dollars. Okay. So we've been saving the fund to see if we could ever do that. And um, this grant application came along. So we would be able to recoup that 11,506 months or so. Yes. The equivalent of. Yeah, within the boating season. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's, it sounds similar to what Mr. Young has been talking about for the last couple council meetings with the ticket prices at uh, the uh, football events, you know, money comes in and should be earmarked and dedicated to a, a certain use. I mean, I, I commend Parks and Rec for doing that. I mean, you take the money in, the fees go in, goes to the co-preservation fund for for purposes to benefit the people who use the, uh, the cove. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, just a couple of just questions, Kath. Um, I saw the explanation, of course, about the number of boats that were reviewed and then the finalized list. Um, did members of Park and Rec or any representative actually inspect the boat that we're talking about purchasing to determine its condition? Uh, does it have a warranty on the motor? Uh, can you shed any light on that? I mean, it's not, it looks like a very clean boat, obviously, from the pictures, but you know, I don't know much about boats. but. Can Nor did I, yeah. but our uh, our harbor master, um, both harbor masters went out and looked at the boat, 
checked it out. Um, we're having the motor is getting a compression, compression test uh, to make sure that's checked. Uh, they've done a, a thorough inspection of the boat. We haven't done a sea trial yet. We would do that before purchasing it, and we would um, look at it again just to make sure. But from what, from what they came back after their inspection, they thought it was in really good condition, uh, excellent condition is the way they said. And they actually did the history. It had two owners, and they, um, they knew one of the owners and did not know the first owner, but it had been well taken care of. If we approve this, when when would the boat be on the water? Um, probably as fast as I could get a check to pay for it, and we inspected it. Okay. So I would say within um, maybe two weeks. You know, we still have to do the sea. We'd still have to do the sea trial, put it in the water, and, and do all that. And if we don't, we there would be no boat all summer and fall. Well, yeah. I mean, this this is the one we were we looked at other boats. I didn't know, you know, we did ask the owner if he would wait till the council meeting whether or not we could get approval, and he seemed to think that he'd be able to, and from what both Harbor Masters told me, and they're, they're, they've owned numerous boats, that the boat looked like it was in excellent shape. Any further questions? Okay. We have a motion and a second on the authorization to purchase. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Extensions? I oppose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cap. Four B, please. Motion to approve the bid from Bartholomew Company for the Emerson Williams flooring project including alternate number one for $25,998. Second. Motion a second. Um, so just to preface, because we, we, I think there, are, there has been some discussion about what I think will be B, C, D, um, possibly even the lease. Um, for those that are here, I think uh, we, uh, there are folks here that are going to be talking about some of these. One of the things that we're obviously looking at is obviously the state budget, which members of the public have communicated on. I would ask that anybody uh, speaking on uh, support of these requisitions, uh, perhaps in anticipating a, a, a general question about the timing of holding on anything until the state budget becomes more clear. Uh, the, obviously, the reality is from what we're seeing that, uh, one, we haven't passed the state budget, questions about the municipal support uh, and potential cuts. Um, I think we've read a little bit about uh, some proposed impacts on municipalities that will, just to refresh people's memory, the current budget that exists today uh, was passed with the understanding that there may be a revisit back. Um, but we operated then, and I think this would be safe to communicate again, that there's, un unlike one of the comments that was made earlier, it is not expectation to increase the budget in the event that there is a state cut. Uh, in fact, we would be doing the opposite. Uh, we'd be confronting whatever potential cut uh, comes, comes forward from the state if that happens in the next anybody's guess. So uh, I know in earlier discussion, I suspect all members of council will have this question. Uh, we would like a bit of a litmus test on all of these items this evening as to whether or not uh, they can be held uh, till that becomes more clear without impacting Timing. I know there are some things like uh, the field, which we added tonight, um, perhaps the blocks for the, uh, the school that are timing sensitive that obviously will weigh in on that. But um, Emerson Williams being one example in terms of timing and a, and a ticket item, because I think we'll be facing that possibility and whether it be capital improvement projects or expenditures that were appropriated during the normal budget process. Um, and some of this is relatively close timing, but we, there is a general concern that we may need to have some line items that we have to have available to us uh, in the response of that, of that issue. So I just preface any comments tonight. I think that'll be a general question. So um, Fred, I think you're here on the Emerson Williams one. So maybe, you know, just as a starting point, I, your documentation on this has been thoroughly explained. But um, if we 
uh, were to have a later start date for any reason if we wanted to hold on this one as an example maybe you can shed some light on what if any impact that might have in getting this done and is this subject to uh, a possible later start date without impacting operations well I, I, <coughs> excuse me obviously it would be um, it would be in it, our best interest in the school uh, you know the schools itself to uh, to get this done over the summertime if I have to I'd have to wait until uh, probably the the Christmas break and we could at least get the uh, uh, the base bid done because this is for both base bid and the alternates uh, of the uh, six other classrooms uh, I am not quite sure if they could uh, handle all of that within uh, uh, what's it about 10 days time plus it's a holiday time so we'd be backing off a couple of days there uh, could I do the uh, uh, the main quarters uh, that are the base bid probably so okay but I have probably have to wait until either either springtime and or next summer to do the, uh, uh, the classroom areas so what what would be the right now this is a, a 10 day project roughly one, I mean, after I, a startup, I, obviously, not the... I, I, I would say it's going to take... It, here, we we built in for like 40 days for this. Um, they can get it done before school, and, and speaking to the... Because I, I vetted this out a couple of different times with this particular vendor because of the cost. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, um, he seems to think he, he can get it done within... 20 25 days well and it's important to note that working this is days well under the CIP budgeted of 60,000 yep. too unlike some of the other items so so uh, other questions for council on this particular bid I'll start with Amy um, have you used this bidder before yes we have and um, <clears throat> the next bidder is over ten thousand dollars higher I, I, so I that kind of struck me when I yeah. you know when I got these back from uh, uh, from finance and I went through every one of them uh, each one of the packages to see what it was I, I did put a call into the vendor in uh, because I was a little bit awestruck about pricing um, he um, actually came back out to the job remeasured the job and I had, had indicated to him at that point I says if you left something on the table it's either yours or I, I I'm gonna pull your bid I'm gonna go to the next qualified bidder and uh, he remeasured. We went over the specifications again, right from start to finish. And he seemed to think. He says, "I don't think I left anything on the table." And he says, "I can, you know, I can do this." So. Okay. So you're confident. Yeah. With that. Okay. Thank you. Tony. Uh, <clears throat> Fred, I, I just want to be sure. Uh, when they lift the tiles, are we going to be looking any uh, hazardous material in no. there? No. This, we, we've, I did vet that out a little bit further than uh, I normally would. We have documentation in our HERA reports that states that there is no asbestos um, on the floors. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we went every, every few feet, pulled it because it's all carpeted area, pulled the carpet back just to make sure that we found no, no uh, hazardous material under there. Because I don't want to see us, you know, starting the project and then have to put it on hold because we got to no, no, you know, contain the area. No, we we did the whole project. we did the whole area itself. So, Done. just on that same line, um, from Tony, were was the glue from the carpet tested to make sure, and and I don't know, just based on our past experience related to PCBs. And what was in glue and stuff? They test for uh, uh, asbestos-laden materials for when they do that. No. So that could be a potential. Uh, I'm just asking the question. No, because you don't test for that. You test for in, in, in flooring materials. Uh, 99 times out of 100, you're looking at, at asbestos-laden material. Within the glue and and I'm or I'm thinking of that the glue. I was thinking specifically because it was glue. And didn't we? I don't know. Maybe my yeah, mind no, is shot. I, I remember the same. Yeah. No, that was in the, that was if I if I, I may, uh, Mr. Floors. Mayor, that was in a, that was in the brick that we found that at no, the. It was, uh, a, it was one of the gym floors. It was glue under the auxiliary gym. Yeah, right. that was that w right. that that was yeah. a that a, no, a, a, a black. 
mastic. A, a black mm -hmm. mastic was found, and that was asbestos laden material. Okay, that was not a glue. No. Okay. Okay. We're all shell shocked from all the. Yeah. The high <laughs> yeah, there's got to be something in it. <laughs> Well, so you're Fred. confident that's not an issue. I, here again, we tested it again. I even brought in uh, uh, my environmental company to uh, took the time, take some more tests, you know, do a couple of tests here and there uh, 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 along the west corridor and along the north corridor to make sure of that. Jody? Uh, how many feet are we talking about here? Because you're saying two corridors plus some classrooms? The quarters is probably um, my best guess at uh, 500 linear feet. Okay, the classrooms are approximately uh, between anywhere between 800 and uh, 950 square feet. And so we're ripping carpet up and we're putting tile down. Correct. Is this any of this carpet? Was it in the area where they had to replace the gym? Uh, you know how we had the issue with the leaking? No, no, ma'am. So this is more of an aesthetic thing? What is the... No, it's, it's the carpet has outlived its useful life. It's been there. Um, I've been here 11 years now. It um, was showing signs of wear then. It's showing much more signs of wear now. Uh, and it would have to be replaced. And the best thing you can put uh, on a quarter floor like that would be... Uh, um, would be VCT tile. Mm -hmm. It lasts. It lasts longer. It looks better. It'll make the. If you look down the east hallway now, if you walk into Emerson Williams School, anybody please go and look. Uh, um, you can see once the tile is is uh, is waxed and shined, it it just brings a different aura to the building. Other questions for Fred? Okay, we have a motion and a second on the VCT carpet replacement at Emerson Williams in front of us. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Thank you, Fred. Thank you. 4C. Motion to purchase and have install a truck lift from Ray Jurgen for the amount not to exceed $165,000. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Sally. Good evening. Sally Katz, Director of Physical Services. Um, what you have before you is a request to replace a hydraulic lift at Physical Services. The current lift um, at our best guess that we were be able to find is that the lift, the current lift was placed somewhere in the 1950s. The lift is not usable right now and has not been for years because the capacity for that lift is far below what any of our trucks are even when they have no materials in them. Therefore, from a safety feature, it is, it is unusable. It costs us money to send our trucks out because we have to, when we have to do repairs on the dump trucks, since we don't have a lift, we have to have uh, an outside vendor do the repairs. We have five mechanics who could do the repairs. However, because we don't have a lift and have no way to safely lift the trucks, we cannot do it in-house. With this lift, we would be able to bring back the majority of the work to our in-house staff. And this is also off of a state bid. Uh, it's the New Jersey um, Alliance that we belong to. Yeah. One of the items, and we had this conversation uh, because I knew uh, this concern was out there. The two items that are on this agenda, the, the bid for the um, flooring in this one represent a little over $200,000 of a 901 CIP program. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really, and then if you look at what has to be spent like you know, stormwater phase two and a couple of other things, there are still going to be $400,000 or so of items that we will hold on and intended to hold on of this $901,000. The truck lift made sense to move forward on because at the end of the day, that's long term going to save us money. Mm -hmm. uh, we have five brand new mechanics that are highly trained and can do the work. 
and we're not making use of the of their abilities at this point. So I recommended moving that forward, knowing the constraints were under because long term it's our to our benefit. Same with uh, Fred's uh, item. Mm -hmm. It's a school. It has to be done during the summer. It represents a small fraction of the 901. There are other dollars available. You can make decisions with later on as you go forward with the budget. How much have we spent sending trucks out in the last year? Um, I don't have that exact figure. I could get it for you. But anytime we need to do repair for, ho for hoses, for diagnostics, for brakes, for working on any part of the, the dump body or um, any part of the truck, we're sending it out because we don't safely have a way to get in and under the truck. Is there any work that's done in-house? On the dump trucks right now, only anything that we could get to from inside the cab, which is not a lot, or in, from inside um, the body of the dump part of it, um, some of the engine work, but nothing from underneath. We cannot do any. We really can't do any of that from from a safety standpoint. And just one one last one. So the number approximately for that we've spent of a year. What's the harm in waiting two months or a month and figuring out where we are with the state? Yeah. You know, once again, this is a project that we're just delaying, again, using an outside vendor. Um, could we delay it? That is certainly your prerogative, and we would just continue to do what we have been doing, which is to send the trucks out, um, even though we do have the in-house staff that could do the work. And I only ask, because, I mean, we've been mm -hmm. delaying for how long? For this? Yeah. We've been planning for a while to try to get it. Uh, replaced, but there have been other things that, because of an emergency status, they leapfrogged over it, um, uh, and and the CIP list and some of the other requests. Yeah, it made it, made it to CIP after a long period of time, mm -hmm. w w which was hold. I, again, just framing what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If if we had, you know, let's pick a number, a million two, that we were going to wrestle with in two weeks, three weeks, or our next mm -hmm. our next meeting is in August, correct? August. What's August uh, 17th, I think. So August, Somewhere around that. Yeah, so roughly the same time frame. Cause we, or if, if we had to, we could schedule a, a, a special council meeting if the budget were to pass so we could get to it sooner. But I, I'm, again, the, the, the thinking is like something like this, which may very well be fine as for an appropriation mm -hmm. within the budget if we are not facing. But if we were looking at a million or a million two cut, this might be one of the items we would want to have in our in front of us that we may have to wait mm -hmm. if we're is and unlike probably like the vct that and obviously right. fred's made mm -hmm. that presentation it came in under budget the timing of it is such that getting that done now makes sense and i think it also reduces the cleaning mm -hmm. expense if i'm not mistaken this one mm -hmm. might lend itself to that one month wait mm -hmm. we but, would continue you know, to do again business. i know you guys are making good judgments and jeff was mm -hmm. just sharing you know you've got well, that's fine if, if the yeah. council decides to wait that's fine. I just right. want as many tools available to us. Again, reiterating what what we said mm -hmm. earlier, and just to uh, rebutting that it is not going to be the intention. I don't think of this council to increase. Right. I don't think we even have the ability to do that, frankly. But based on how we pursued the, the, mm -hmm. the budget, but we, we want as many tools mm -hmm. come whatever the week, two weeks, or a month when when and if a budget passes. I, I assume you guys are thinking the same way. Mm -hmm. Holding makes sense until we know our real number here. Yeah, I just beg some other questions. Go ahead. Good. I would like to see some of the data behind it. So, if you could give us a better idea of what's spent and what are the, if the mechanics aren't able to do that kind of work, what are they doing? They're doing work. We have fire trucks that we work on. We work on all the police vehicles. We have a number of, especially for the summer, we do work on all of uh, the majority of our um, pickup trucks any admin vehicle that is in the fleet, we perform all the service on. Uh, we even work on the fire boats. Um, we have worked on the police boat. We have done work on the trailers. They do, the mechanics also repair all of the equipment that is used by the groundskeepers. So we're talking anything from a weed whacker all the way up to the gang mower. They are busy constantly. Um, and once again, it's just, you know, we, but we, this is the type of unit that if you were to go to any other garage, you would see. But as you alluded to, we would continue to do business as usual. We, if we have needed to do a major repair, we would send the truck out, have it repaired, and then 
bring it back and put it into into the rotation. Paul. Yes, Amy. Um, so do you current in this current year's budget do you have money built in to send these big vehicles out for repair we have a general maintenance um, and repair line item and when we've had to send trucks out we utilize those funds and so is that um, amount for this year the same as last year i believe so yes so if we did purchase this, there may be some savings in that kind of a line item? A little, because we don't do other repairs in order to make up for if we have to send a truck out. It's, it's always a, a game of balancing to zero. Um, and so there's always need out there, which is going unattended when we have to send out a truck. If we don't have to send out a truck, then we may be able to do some of the more proactive and regular maintenance on some of the other vehicles or other equipment utilizing that money and is that how you would use the five mechanics time as well because you said they're busy now so by bringing in the lift they'd have more work to do so mm -hmm. would they again be prioritizing their they would be prioritizing days? it it's also seasonal one we'll, we will start with actually within the next month we will actually start preparing for leaf season we'll start cleaning the boxes getting the boxes done the boxes go on the trucks um, we start prepping the trucks and then of course the trucks are in full season once snow season starts so the mechanics it is a, a cyclical business there's always work for them to do there's always work to, to for them to do on police vehicles fire apparatus and also maintaining the other cars that are in the fleet okay. so it, it sounds like this is something we may be able to table then for our August meeting where we have a better idea of the state budget it's Uh, anything else I mean I think I think we can simply vote it down and then obviously add it to be added or if we want to make a motion to table it for the August meeting that's fine too whatever what's better for you Jeff table yeah okay so I, I think we should entertain a motion to table motion to table this item second all in favor aye, aye. aye. thank you Sally okay. I think I'm on again <laughs> I brought this one forward, the skid steer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because okay. the, grant, the grant has to be spent right. by the end of August. Yes. That's the only reason why this one's right. on here. It has to be spent, and we have to have it ordered. We also have to decommission the other uh, piece of equipment that it is replacing. So we would need to do that with authorization from this meeting, not the August meeting, in order for us to be able to make the deadline for the grant for this particular piece of equipment. Let's let's introduce, introduce so the motion. I'll make a motion to purchase the skid steer loader from HO Pen off the state bid contract for fifty four thousand nine hundred and sixty six dollars. Second. Motion is second. Um, and so this one has the grant yes. included in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the cost of the town is the forty one two forty four, correct? And this yes. one does not lend itself, obviously, to that same time restraint. And we need to get this in play. Yes, we do. In order for us to meet the requirements to get the grant money, we would need to to um, and I, move and I forward think, on that now. I think most of us do remember the discussion during the budget about the current condition of our uh, the 2001, and that's a that's a, uh, a heavily used piece of equipment. Yeah, it's used in. Um, it's used in grading, it's used in leveling, it's used in debris um, removal. Um, we move materials around with it. We transport materials from a job, from the, the yard to a job site and back. Um, it can also do uh, when we've needed to do certain landscaping, when we've needed to do um, certain tree planting, depending on the size of the trees. Once again, it's a piece of equipment like many of our other pieces of equipment that we multi-use um, and we use it throughout the year. Does the 2001 have any scrap value or trading value or? No, what we do is by, because of this grant, we decommission it. Um, so we literally have to um, weld through it, um, rendering it useless. There may be some scrap or um, minor metals in it, um, but the majority of our value to it is the grant money that we get for it by it's a, decommissioning it's a clean it. diesel grant so you yes. have to render it inoperable oh, yes because of the diesel right. yeah, yeah. A new i'm sorry I, I yeah i thought that was part or a cleaner diesel 
Yes. Yeah, it's under the new diesel formula. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that, that makes better sense because it's going to save life. Yeah, and <laughs> we've been very fortunate. To get the grants. Right. We've been very fortunate with these grants um, to be able to get the newer equipment, newer, more efficient equipment. Did we, uh, did we get the 2001 new? I wasn't here, but I believe we did, yes. Okay. So 16 years. Is that, that's probably about the right lifespan, 15 years. Okay. Yeah, Mike first, Mike, and then you. Did, that's the only one we have to yes. do this type of work? And there's nothing else that can do this down there? We have the larger payloaders, but we can't get the payloaders into this. Uh, can get into smaller spaces and can be used by also the grounds crew. You don't need a CDL in order to operate it. Um, and we can use it on kind of smaller projects. Um, we can also, as I said, you can use it in tighter spaces. It's more maneuverable, um, but it is the only one that we have. Amy? Mike had a good question. That was my question. <laughs> okay. Well, Tony? Uh, Sally, uh, on the current schedule, do you have some attachments for it to do other things? We Would do. Would those be able to be used on the new one, or are you going to need to get new attachments? Um, the attachments come with the new ones. Okay. Um, they fit better, and it just it comes as, as the package. Okay. I didn't realize they were all in there. Yeah. Mike? Oh. Uh, do we have a warranty from this company? I mean, is, is there any type of you know, mm -hmm. five year, ten year? Yeah, they come with standard warranties for parts and for parts and replacements, and also, um, you know, bas the basic warranties. So that just like on any other vehicle that we purchase. Um, are we purchasing purchasing it through you know a local company? Connecticut company or anything? Yes, well, and off the Connecticut state bid list. Okay. Thank you. Sally, if we did not purchase this, how would operations change? It would hamper us to be able to finish up projects in a timely manner in that, um, you know, anytime you have to go from being able to do something with a machine to doing something manually, you run the risk of injury to the people who are doing that work. It elongates the work. Um, we wouldn't be able to do uh, certain work in smaller areas. We also have used this. We used the skid steer during the last couple winters, even at the high school, to do some snow removal. Um, and some other because it was able to get into some tight spaces when we do some of the prep work when we're working on parking lots and other things like that it allows us to do some of the grading so it it would elongate a project and as I said potentially if we now have to do that with manual labor we would run the possibility of injury to the laborers and those laborers are our staff mm -hmm. Just one more question the capacity of the skid loader, do you know the, um, I don't see it on the. Um, the model number I believe is on the. But is it a like 2,000 pound, 3,000 pound, um, 4,000 pound, you know, I don't, the capacity yeah. for that? I'm assuming, because just looking it up quickly, based on the, the poundage that it is able to work with, there's multiple different costs. Yeah. Um, I think. I'll have to get the, the I can get the specifics, but it's it's a smaller um, it's a smaller unit. It's not going to be used in major construction. Any other questions for Sally? Okay, we have a motion and a second for the authorization for the award. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Is that two? How many no's? Two. Okay. Here. Thank you. 4E, please. A motion to award a contract to Atlantic Pavement Marking, Inc for pavement marking services for $42,000 per Capital Region Council of Governments bid number 652-A. Second. Go ahead, Joe. 
Uh, line striping is in our annual operating budget in the engineering division. Uh, we reline all the streets in the parking lots each year. That's what this is for. So we would recommend accepting the CROG unit pricing. That's in budget, right? It's in budget. It's Questions? in the operating budget. Questions for council? What would happen if we deferred? I mean, it's in the budget. I know that we're looking at the state bid, but what would happen if this was deferred? Um, we would want to get it done before winter because once those lines aren't done, it gets to be a little, um, they're already faded by now and should be done annually from a safety perspective. So I don't know if holding till August gets us enough time for the contractor to come in and get this done. That, that was your question right now. But I guess would this be something you would eliminate from the budget, the line striping of your roads? Yeah, that's a good point. Even if we delayed it, would this be a, a likely cut area? So it's a safety issue, right? Yeah. This is. Uh, all throughout town, or is it public buildings? Town schools? roads and public buildings and schools. Everywhere. Everywhere. Crosswalks. Tony? Uh, just a comment on, uh, from having worked in engineering years past. Uh, they normally get this done so they could get the crosswalks and stuff in before school mm -hmm. starts. Mm -hmm. That way, when the kids go to school, they're using the crosswalks and not, you know, jaywalking or whatever. And for the safety, you know, the signs are in there for the stop bars and everything else. So it's a, a safety issue for the kids go back to school because they've always in the past tried to get it done before school starts. Questions? Other questions? Mike Roth? Kind of going off what Donna was asking, is it, and you're saying throughout town, is there a priority? I mean, it, or does every road get restriped and every road gets restriped um, the roads that have them the roads that have them mm -hmm. right. and the parking lots that have them um, I mean I'm almost wondering if there's a can we prioritize crosswalks I mean it, it does it have to be the full amount I mean, I don't know if we, you know, it's difficult having this, you know, impasse up in Hartford kind of clouding everything. I don't know if we could, um, as going off of what Tony was saying, simply do the crosswalks for schools. If, if you want to, I don't mean to, if you want to make a motion just to do the crosswalks, we'll work it out. Yeah, but. I guess we would have to see what the the figures are. I mean, it's forty. It's probably a third. What's here on the bid sheet? Well, there's your unit price. Um, there's sixty-four standard crosswalks, and there's fifty-four <coughs> school and elderly crosswalks. So it's seven, seven, eight thousand. For Atlantic and maybe ten thousand for highway safety. You want to do your slow school stencils. You want to do your fire lanes. <coughs> you want to do the handicaps. Okay. Can we uh, can we authorize the crosswalks and allow that number to be driven and then, depending on what happens with the state budget, determine the roads will or won't survive? Paul, can I just add, um, if this is a safety issue, it, it doesn't seem like, it, I, I feel like there are other monies that we should hold back on um, if we're concerned about, you know, the state budget and that I think because this is a safety issue and that it's something that's done every year that we should be doing this now and not. Yeah, no, I, I agree on the know. crosswalks for sure. I mean, uh, crossing, safety, handicap, but like when you talk about parking, parking lot markings, which are fading, 
I don't know that those are safety as much as they are aesthetic. Um, and, I, and I'm only thinking in terms of, you know, I don't know the logistics of how this unfolds. Jeff can address that. But if we authorized uh, the portion for crosswalks, which is the safety issue, and got it in the, in the playing field with respect to Tony's point about prior to school, that it gives us a, I mean, again, every one of these numbers could mean something in a couple of weeks. So. Do we lose this price if we, if we break it up? No, this is a crog bid. Okay. <coughs> But you'd probably want some money for removal, because if you're going to take some out, I don't know if we are. Again, uh, I don't have the details on every particular line. We would we be okay authorizing the amount up to not to exceed 40 at the manager's discretion, in my mind. So you can just change we the can language. And I can work with the town engineer to prioritize. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. I mean, and again, in a month, we're going to have an answer on whether there's any savings that we may need to grab from here. But I think more tools, the better. I mean, I, I agree with Amy's point about safety, though. I think the crosswalk should be done. We'd let the manager, together with his staff and Sally, figure that out. But we, I would, I would allow the wording to be up to not to exceed the 40, uh, the, the spending of which would be at the discretion of the manager for safety. People comfortable with that? With the not to exceed 40,000, I mean, that's what Atlantic's coming in at, 40,069. Yeah, what I'm saying is I'm letting Jeff say I can only I only need 20 of it right now. I well, was I'd left Jeff, Jeff uh, giving the direction that it's the crosswalks and not the parking lots and the others. That uh, what I'm saying is he he could pull out line items on this for now, knowing that you know maybe the August meeting we can say okay, Jeff determined we only need to spend 12 of this for safety purposes for crosswalks. The other 28, will he would put on hold pending our August meeting. And that's not as sensitive to time because the road stuff could probably could be done after school opens, but the crosswalk shouldn't be. So I'm just giving him the latitude to, to I think you get the tone of what we're trying to do. So. Yeah, well, I, I would say the crosswalks, fire lanes, and, you know, when we look at some of that stuff. I mean, it's almost like any CIP. It's going to come in under budget if we hold back on eight of these 12 items or something. I just want to give him the latitude to guys get us a little more time. So why don't we just vote on the ones that we need to? Yeah, you, we can do that too. I'm just, I'm just trying to simplify it, knowing that Jeff can probably do that for us if we leave it to not to let him. I get, I guess not. That's what. I have confidence in him. I'm comfortable with that. I think, I think, frankly, as Amy said, this is yeah, this is a line a item plan. that we're going to do, why? no matter what the state does. Right. Well, I think we probably would, but I think we could, we could uh, extend a little time. On it. So uh, can someone suggest some language on Before we go there, yeah. I think this might merit at least future conversations next year when we're talking about the budget, God willing, some of us, all of us come back, um, that maybe we talk about what should and should not merit, you know, repainting, you know, um, looking at the the markings here i know it's not much but handicap stencils um do they need to be done yearly yes because yeah. they fade and the salt eats them up um we actually painted the gravel at millwoods park because people didn't know how to park at millwoods park so i i get it what you're trying to do but there's also a, a sense of order and responsibility here yeah. for the patrons and drivers of the town I'm calling for an up or down vote on this. I, I, I think I we would, should go up or down. Go this is a this is one of the few things people actually expect from the town council is roads and safety, and it, it just doesn't make any sense to punt that down the road while we're approving skiers or whatever this thing is. We just <laughs> fifty-four thousand dollars. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. This is a priority, so I'm calling for an up or down vote on this. Yeah, but it's not really a priority for all these items. You it's a priority for, for some of them. It's not a priority for everything on here. I'm talking about a priority for the citizens. They expect the streets to be lined, the parking lots to be lined. All right, if that's what you think. They don't care if we buy heavy equipment or can lift a fire truck. They don't care. Well, I think they would if, you know, we're spending, and we'll find the numbers when Sally gets us the numbers, but if we're paying $300,000 a year to have an outside vendor fix our fire trucks and well, our, I bet we're not. And I'll tell you it's not that yeah. much no <laughs> <laughs> but it's not I but mean, two it, but two or three of them add up to a lot of money right oh yeah and listen I'm 
I'm coming from the fiscal conservative side that, you know, until they can fix that mess up in Hartford, I don't think we should be spending a lot of this money or any of this money. Well, there are that, priorities, though. Well, that gets me to my next question. Are we doing the fall paving program? Or are we punting on that? Because I need an answer tonight. If you're going to really buckle down, are we paving in the fall? Because I can't wait till August for an answer on that. And that's a half million dollars. We already approved that, though, right? We'll no, we can always we'll tell them to stop. The no, but I'm saying that's been funded and signed off on. The vendor's been picked and everything's been lined up on that already, right? Yeah, but we can stop. Well, this, this thing's on the table. If people don't want to vote for it, don't vote for it. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a yeah. motion on the table, but, and I, I'm fine with the calling of the question. You've called the question. So we have a motion and a second on the go table with respect to this. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Any abstention? Okay. So we can move on. That is fine. But, um, you know, again, I, and I, I appreciate your point, Jeff. Obviously, we're just trying to create a little bit of wiggle here as we get closer. I would have hoped that the state stuff would have been resolved by now. But what's coming out of there is, in, is increasingly discouraging. And, you know, with respect to the roads, I would echo Anthony's point about the roads even more than the striping. You know, that, that we're doing a very, very small percentage of roads. That's probably one of the things we wouldn't go to. Who knows? But you've already initiated it. We funded it. We approved it. Work is being uh, deployed. Um, I think General Paving and Tilcon have probably already got equipment arriving. No, we're not going to pave till September. In terms of staging. In terms of actual paving. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we're going to, if for some reason that were to get on the screen, if the the narrative was awful, was there's still time to pull it in August. So I know it's not ideal, and I don't think that that's likely. But it's not really on our agenda, is it? No, it's not on our agenda this evening. No. So we don't need to add any creation. <laughs> um, well, I just wanted to put it out there in case. I didn't go, want to go too far down the path yeah, without I'll, you having a chance to. No, I, I'm, I'm hoping we'll have some clarity on this. I should be speaking here into the mic for. Um, and I would like to, you know, at least at some point, look at what we do with the markings. I mean, yeah, if, I, I if think, we're, if I think we're you're right, Mike. When we striping, look at this. you know, town hall and, and the library and the police department and, you know, the nature center, every year. And all we're doing is putting more white paint on top of more white paint on top of more white paint just simply because we need to do it. You know, I think we should be looking at what needs to be done rather than just simply doing it because it's on the, the list of sure. what gets done. Understood. Okay. 4F, please. Motion to authorize the town manager to enter into a master lease agreement with TD Equipment Finance, Inc. for the financing and purchase of rolling stock included in the fiscal year 18 CNEF budget. Second. Do we have you sufficiently shell-shocked by now? <laughs> <laughs> this, um, well, anyway. Uh, the actual payments for these aren't in this fiscal year. They're for next fiscal year. But we can certainly hold on this if you'd like to. Um, just, just give us the economics for a minute with respect. I know it doesn't fund until right. the next year, but the commitment, uh, and, and I, I'm thinking of something that Donna said back in the budget process, it's hard this year, it's going to be worse next year. So I think we should just think about this one as well because you know we aren't just wrestling the one-year profile. But these are three-year term leases on the equipment that we approved during the budget process. Uh, that my first thought is may very well be a, a, a tool that we're going to want to think about, even though it won't affect us till the following year. We may still want to. My guess is whatever happens in a week, two, or three weeks is going to happen again in 18. Well, and if you look at this, we didn't put a dump truck on this. We didn't put any big equipment on this. Right, so this we actually awesome. blew it off for next year, knowing the constraints we're under. So next year, it's just going to get. You're, you're just going to back up that. Yeah, some of these, these are like also police vehicles are in here, right? Yeah, yeah so four, and we buy four every year. Yeah, just just refresh our memory about these police vehicles. What else is in this one? Uh, there's some pickups for the for physical services because, you know, they wear them out. Uh, there's a, the CNEF list is in here. Okay. Yeah, but if you want to hold for 30 days on this, this we'll that just won't rebid it. That won't anything, right? We'll just rebid it. But it's still the state bid, right? No, well, see the leasing is through the banks. Oh, right, right. So we'll just we can rebid the banks. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I think that's prudent, and we can have that. And discussion. we won't order any of this stuff. Okay. Or send it back, whichever one has happened. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chief's already. Sally, send it all back. No, I'm kidding. 
Just kidding. All right, so uh, do we want to entertain a, a motion to table this? Or just a mm -hmm. question? Yes. Yeah. Is, is, uh, Jeff, is this going to affect the purchase of the skid loader? No, that's cash in reserve. Okay. Yeah. Like there was, in the budget process, we were talking about taking via, uh, police vehicles off the road to wire them. Is this part of that? I think that was about $40,000 or something. I think those vehicles are in here, but they're still. No, those vehicles have been delivered. We have oh, those some are of them. Years. Yeah, right. Those this are being nice. worked on, but we're going to have to wait till the end of this fiscal year to see how much money you have left so we can deploy the rest of them. There's going to be two that don't have equipment until this, the end of this fiscal year, and we can find some money. We would have new police interceptor SUVs without police electronics in it we have two now that we don't have money for equipment for the lease if you look at the cnef list and i put it in the packet that lease amount included the equipment for those vehicles to be deployed whereas the prior purchases from earlier years lacked the sufficient funding from a budget estimate point of view to buy that equipment hmm. so two are going on the street as soon as possible once mm -hmm. in deployment now at the end of this at next month we'll do the transfers we'll find the forty thousand dollars left over probably in the police budget to buy the equipment for that and deploy those two we would buy it and then fiscal service gets it they they install they install, install. Mm -hmm. okay. they do all the vehicle customization they don't need to lift for that one no well this gets here could probably lift it yeah probably this is like duty. Okay. So that's fine if you want to hold on. Okay. Any thoughts on that? You guys okay if we table that yeah, one? This was, so, uh, yeah. All right. So let me entertain a, a motion to table, please. Motion to table us. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. There were, there were three. There was a fire utility truck, a pickup truck, 350, and a pickup truck with a utility body, and four police SUVs. For yeah. next year, but That's included in these yes. lease financing. Okay, so we have time on that. Sure. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and sorry I didn't get a chance to go out on this before. We just met before. So I understand. I'm trying to ambush. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, G. Think on your feet. Yeah, uh, you're good at that. Motion to award the bid for the high school accessory project to Connecticut Custom Aquatics for thirty thousand nine eighty five thirty eight. Uh, from the Emerson Williams flooring project. Second. Fred, are you here for that one? Here. Did you test drive the blocks? Um, no, I'm not really. Swimmer. <coughs> but the the um, specification came from uh, both swim coaches and was vetted by uh, the the uh, athletic director and. Um, run by the board before I even brought it out. Fred, can you um, just shed some light on the, there was an issue on the diving board, the grandfather issue, as I heard. That yeah, the, the uh, uh, back, and I, I, the time frame I'm not quite sure of, mm -hmm. the, the, um, um, the depth of any competition pool in the CIAC for one meter diving, which our board is one meter, uh, you have to have a depth of 15 feet. Our pool is 10 foot, two inches deep. They grandfathered the, the, uh, um, the stay and the board um, and allow them to use that. If we were to change the board or we were to change the, the, the platform in any way, that would, we'd lose that grandfather clause uh, which would probably negate the diving program at the school. <coughs> you can't change the depth of the pool, obviously. Um, no. Okay. Not without that skid still load over you just bought. <laughs> and a lot more water. Okay. So um, this was through the bid process. Is there questions from the council on, on, on the boards? Amy? Um, if this is passed tonight, will the boards, uh, not the boards, will the, um, 
the blocks be installed in time for the fall season? Um, I, they're about four weeks out. So I, I would be, if, if, uh, if you did pass it tonight, I would uh, um, definitely be in conversation with, uh, uh, with Mike O'Neill tomorrow morning to get a purchase order cut to get these, uh, to get it on its way to be uh, 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 fabricated. Call me because Mike's on vacation. Okay. And um, I'm not familiar with the diving board issue. Uh, were there funds somewhere um, for a new diving board? That was all going to be that we we had looked at this within within that funding of that thirty thousand um, dollars. This is well beyond my expertise. I went to uh, a couple of different uh, um, consultants talking about this, and you know how to how to put this together. And this is when we got to uh, uh, the CIAC stating the fact that the the uh, uh, this particular board and a particular pool was was grandfathered in. Um, we thought might, we might be able to get the board refurbished if, if it was necessary. And we're kind of taken away from that because, again, you start to touch everything there, you lose that clause and, and again, lose the program. So were there funds set aside for that purpose that we could use the fun, for this? The, the funds were set aside within what, what uh, 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 was originally brought to the table. but. After finding this, and I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't find this out until, until uh, late. <coughs> excuse me, late into the process mm -hmm. about this. So when when I had uh, spoken to Mr. Emmett and spoken to the uh, uh, athletic director, um, maybe we can enhance our starting blocks a little bit better. But that was all to be encompassed within that uh, within that cost that I brought to uh, capital improvement. Okay. Uh, well, so that leaves the question for me. There was, so, so assumingly, presumably, there was something problematic with the board. The board needed to be cleaned. Okay, there's a certain process to clean this. There's certain acids that they have to use to clean to clean the boards, and and uh, after after further inspection of it, it. Look, I, I had somebody come in to look at it, yeah. and they said they didn't seem to think that there was anything wrong with it. So there's no safety issue with the board other no, than obviously not, it's not compliant this, with the new standards. At but. this time, no. Okay. All right. I have a question. Just, uh, what was the amount from capital improvements that was allotted for this project? 30000 Okay. Thank you. Fred, when you came to capital improvement, the number one priority was replacing the board because it had to be replaced because we were told there were safety issues on it. And then the blocks came, you know, after the fact. Uh, now, you know, the diving board's out of here. The diving board's okay. It can be used. And now you need the blocks. The priority, I'm, I'm not against doing this. I want, I want to be up front. But the fact is when you came to, capital improvement, it was because of a safety issue on the uh, diving board, and that's why they granted it to you, not on the blocking. So, I mean, that upsets me, but I am voting in favor of getting this done to finish this project to get it done. It's how it I wish that there was yeah. something within the handout we got tonight to tell us that the board wasn't going to be done, and why not? So we had that before we came here tonight. So that upsets me. I just want to the, state the, that for you. The, uh, um, and this all came about after I started to vet this all out. Okay. Again, this is not absolutely not my expertise, and I had to go to a lot of other people to get to get you know to look at this to to uh, help us out with this. So, and after we got these people in here to look at that, that was, and that was well after CIP was, uh, 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 that I had met with uh, uh, your, uh, the CIP staff, so. Mike. Nope. But what I mean is within the packet we got tonight, there should have been some verbiage in here to state that this was originally for this, we don't need to do this now because mm -hmm. of these reasons. We should have had that in tonight's packet. Just with the timing, you said it's four weeks out. What do you mean by that? 
is that four weeks till we get the materials here or it's going to take four, four weeks, weeks till we probably get the materials here they All have right. to release they have to release the uh the colors and the uh, and the logo to make sure the logo is imprinted correctly uh we want to use obviously our logo not just an eagle logo uh um on these uh, on, and how on long does it implant. take to do it once we get the materials because we're we're Once you get the material again. here, it's it's just it's a it's a swap out of of what is there. All right, and I just I can't stress enough um, that four weeks. If there's a way to shorten that time frame, because as you know, things go wrong, uh, it, particularly with the pool they it, they did last year. And I don't want to be in the situation August, mid August, coming in saying, "Listen, it's, we've got four weeks before this is done," because I don't want you know we. We had a, an expense last year with, with busing mm -hmm. and trying to find an alternative place for the kids to, to swim. So we, we, sh we can't be there again. I can certainly ask that question. And, and it's not that the, the, the stands that are there are not usable because they are usable. Okay, this is to replace what is already there. But I, I absolutely I just, will ask I just, that question. I'm just saying it now. Yep. I don't want to hear in August yep. that that there's a problem yep. it seems I'll absolutely like... ask that question okay thanks Steve Mike Rowe mm, sorry sorry <laughs> uh, I have to concur with uh, what Steve was saying um, you know Steve knows it as well as any of us the the high school for the last four years has been you know a, a work in progress for the, the families the students staff um, you know the pool was kind of the last uh, part to to get done and unfortunately with all the you know asbestos in the, the ceiling and all that you know the, the athletes or the swimmers had to um, find alternatives last year um, I, I'm happy to know that you know the the blocks are currently the ones that are there are still there so if these come in you know September mid-September that the the swim team will still be able to to utilize what's currently there oh yeah, absolutely would we be able to um, do a swap out after school I mean it does it take a day or does it take a week I, it's it's about a two-day swap out okay yeah uh, from what from what I've told about a two-day swap out okay Oh. Can we make sure that the uh, if we approve this, that the colors are Weathersfield colors and not Glastonbury colors <laughs> like the gymnasium is? Because that seemed like a botched job that somebody should have replaced because our gymnasium is the color of Glastonbury, Glastonbury and it's a brand new gymnasium and I didn't understand why we made it the color of Glastonbury and not the color of Weathersfield. The color will be navy blue, okay. as it, it, navy blue and white, which are the colors of Woodsville High School. All right, thank you. Chef, you have a question? Uh, just if you were going to approve this, Ms. Stewart uh, has very generously offered the Booster Club and some other funds to pay the overage rather than take it from the remainder of the Emerson Williams project. I think that was just my question. Which way we're going to go? I thank Ms. Stewart and the Booster Club, but if we have money in the Emerson Williams flooring project that uh, would be able to cover the $985, thank you for your generosity, but I would like for the town to pay at least that share to put up with uh, everything you've been dealing with and what the uh, swimmers have been dealing with. I concur with Mike Rowe. I have a question. <laughs> um, shouldn't the price go down if the board's no longer involved in this? The diving board, I mean? The board wasn't even bid. But to Tony's point, wasn't that part of what the original ask was? The original ask was for the board, and that was they were looking at $30,000, $35,000 back then just for the board, and then they went at the blocks afterwards. But they had approved the board at the thirty thirty five. So what they're doing now is, you know, they don't have to do the board, so they're going to use the money and spend it all on uh, blocks. But they never had to do the board. Originally, they did. No, we were no, no, they didn't, though. That's what they said at CIP. Okay. 
The original intent, Mr. Spinella, was was the that the uh, or the reports that I received were that the the board was um, uh, not compatible anymore with what would. And again, I, I'm not. I, this is again my not my expertise. The the uh, um, the color of the board, the spring tension of the board, and when we had the consultant come in here and look at this, he verified he said there's absolutely nothing wrong with this piece of equipment and i apologize mr martino for not having that i just want to make sure we're not getting overcharged for blocks it would seem like a board would be more expensive than blocks but that's just me from what yeah. i understand the board is 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 quite expensive i did not even try to dive into that Excuse the pun. Pun intended. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it, there is a, a huge expense to that between the uh, um, the stand and the board itself, and the uh, the the articulation piece on 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 how much spring that the board actually gets. Any other questions? Okay, we have a, question, a motion and a second with respect to this budget. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? And we're not going to, we're going to include the 985, obviously. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Last item is, uh, is the walk-in item on Catone Field. Um, Um, I'm going to introduce a motion to approve the stone leveling course for Catone Field in an amount not to exceed 39156 paid for from the CIP reserve. Second. Jeff? Yes, as, as uh, you've heard that when we remove the uh, original turf, a lot of the bigger stones that were originally below the smaller stones worked their way to the surface. In order to smooth that out, to put the pad down, uh, and still achieve the correct um, mm -hmm. <coughs> surface, they need to cover that and smooth that off with a stone dust leveling course. So what they'll do is they'll bring in a quarter inch of stone dust, compact it, and that'll give about an eighth of an inch coverage over those larger stones. They'll re-laser level it and then put the stone uh, or put the new turf or the pad on top of that and the turf on top of the pad. Um, needs to be done in order to achieve the, uh, the specific testing we uh, we bid for. They started working today on just some some uh, rough grading. Uh, this will be done over a couple days and uh, get this done. We are still on schedule for the 11th, but it's getting close. Mike, a couple questions on the the stones aren't going to move anymore. Well, the stone dust provides a cap type to it, but over time it'll work itself around. But o overall. The stone dust will provide enough of a cap so it doesn't impact. No, I'm, but the stones moved. Are they going to move so then in 10 years from now there's going to be stones that are higher? You said the stones moved up, right? Yeah, over 14 years they worked their way to the well, surface. Right, so they were lower. Are they now they're only an inch or, or eighth of an inch away? Are they going to move up and then we're going to have a big issue here? According to Luke, putting the stone dust down provides for the surface that's necessary to achieve the uh, safety standard we want but over for the long term. For a long term. So next, when you replace it again, you're probably going to have to do the same thing. Stone dust, but stone dust. would the okay? But the stones are going to be even higher. Well, whatever stones are on what the surface, you? you're going to cover again. Okay. So does the field rate? I just, I guess, I don't understand. Well, the stones get now, higher. They're going to compact it now, and they're going to scrape off what they can, and then bring in stone dust to level this off. And they're going to put it, it back down. They're going to pack it back down and put a layer to protect it from coming up, but right. it may still wick up anyway. Yeah. Did we do this the first time? Do you know? No, the first time, well, the first time you put the medium in to provide drainage, right. and the smaller stones are at the surface, right. just that some of them, not over time, uh, over time working moisture way up. Wicking. Yeah. So we actually had Close Jensen Miller, the original designers, come out and look at it, and they said it's, yeah, well, that happens. And they were also recommended the stone dust cap to, to alleviate solve. the problem. Which we didn't do that. Okay. Yeah, you didn't need to last time. Yeah, right, because it was new. It, it was, was new. packed down, it was new. Yeah. You didn't have any wicking up. Okay, and who did our due diligence on the 
Luke did our due diligence on like the price and everything yes. that they're going to charge us. We're still we're going to try to work with to get the price down. This is a not to exceed number. Yeah, we, we it looked and, high. And when? So this gets approved. When is this going to start? Tomorrow. They started this afternoon on a lot of the other grading work. So the stone is ready to go. It's just they need the approval from us. Mm -hmm. okay. Our engineers are confident that compacting the stone dust so much would still allow for drainage down yes both not Luke pooling and or Rose jensen like said this was going to work and not impact the drainage okay. that was our major concern too it, it drains so well because you do have larger medium in there right mm -hmm. but this compacted quarter inch or whatever it would be yeah. by the time it's compacted would be permeable mm -hmm. yeah. okay yeah and we from i don't know if it was part of the discussion <coughs> when we voted on it in council the pad it comes with a pad doesn't it yes isn't there a new shock pad that we spent extra money on yep so wouldn't that separate from where the stones are to where the field is anyway well the pad needs to be on a smooth surface okay and you're not going to get the smooth surface with the larger rocks if we had if the first six inches of rock were the smaller quarter inch stone you could smooth it out where you wouldn't have those protrusions but right now you're going to grade it you're going to cover with a quarter inch of stone dust and compact it to an eighth and then put the pad on top of that okay it's not uncommon to do this on older fields Was the state of the art that the larger stones were used back then and now they don't use them? Usually use them on the lower. You know, you build it, you have big stones on the bottom and you work way up with the small stones on top. And that's probably the way this was done. It just kind of shifts over time. It's just a big bathtub full of rocks. That's all this is. And the only reason I asked was should this have been anticipated when the original bid was? Uh... Perhaps, but we were, we were moving ahead quickly. But I'm not in proposing to add this to the lease amount. This will be cash. Other questions on this? Is that mechanism better for us in the long term? Does it save us money to not put it in the lease? Long term, yeah. You're not paying interest on that $40,000. But we've already set a number with the bank. Right. So we'd rather not go back to the bank and raise that number up. Are we negating something else that we need to have the CIP money for? Well, the reserve is used for these type of overages, mm -hmm. but we can always use more money in the reserve. I think you've seen over time that we don't have enough money for our capital improvement projects as we go. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from council? I'll keep this one on track, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, minutes from June 19th, please. I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of June 19th, 2017. Second. All in favor? Any changes? I have just a little Go change ahead. to Go ahead, on Amy. page three. Um, my name is missing an O. Page, which page three? What? Page three, it says Councilor Bell. You could just add an O, please. <laughs> Thank you. Any other changes, guys? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Abstain. Thanks, Donna. Okay. Before we go back to public comment, I think uh, thank you, all of you, for laboring through some of that. Appreciate the kind of on the fly by you, Jeff. Uh, I know we didn't really get time to meet in advance, but actually, I'll go right back. I was looking at this quickly. It's actually Counselor Rel, so that B should be a R, not a bellow. I believe I asked that question of uh, Derek <laughs> Greger. Well, let's just get oh, this where, right. Where, that's at the top? <laughs> no, I, I'm talking about, it says, um, Councillor Bell asked that there's a motion for funding right. from CROG 
right. for the state and was wondering if that was the same area and how does Council it play out with the MDC that. project? Didn't I, did I ask that question or did you ask that question? I think I did. Well, we could ask for the town clerk to well, listen to the... Because it's, <laughs> it's either a dropping of the O or a... Yeah, change the name of the R. Because I did ask... Um, the following question was um, something that you asked, I believe. But I'm, we can check yeah. that. Dolores, would you I can't remember. That? Sure. Thank you. Either way. You guys can wrestle that out yep. after the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you again, Jeff, for assistance on some of the items. Public comment? Tom? As he comes up, I have uh, a number of people who had sent um, papers and notes for the uh, connectivity of the town for the community project. I have Jennifer Reagan, Lefebvre, Paul and Margaret Pace, Maya and Rich uh, Schulman. Julie Lemos, Brian Freeman, the Kim family, uh, the, Bob, the Bob and family, Kim, Steve, Alex, and Michael, the Tourism Commission, and of course the Bike Walk Weathers family. Thanks. Ready, set, go. I'm not too happy yeah. with this. Uh, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. At a previous meeting, the town engineer gave us a presentation on uh, road improvements on Middletown Avenue. And uh, during that presentation, he had a slide up on the big screen of, uh, of uh, Middletown Avenue with the uh, Jersey barriers, and it revealed a traffic sign that was skewed off to the side and <clears throat> partially covered by vegetation. And Deputy Mayor Barry asked if that was a current picture or was that had been corrected. And uh, Derek wasn't sure, but he said he'd get somebody out there and... Uh, check into it. So uh, Tuesday morning I uh, drove up um, uh, northbound on Middletown Avenue just to take a look at it. And I could hardly find the sign. It was almost completely over and you almost had to stop your vehicle to, to find the sign. So uh, I went on my way to work and I said, you know, maybe I'll take a picture of that. And I drove by the following morning with my camera in hand and there's the sign it's all straight and perfect and somebody trimmed all the trees and this is great you know pictures worth a thousand words so here's some pictures that I'd like you to look at of Catone Field and uh, while you're looking at those pictures I'll go into my little story so at a at another meeting we were discussing or the town council was discussing the uh, the bid for Catone Field uh, renovation. And the topic about fencing came up. And uh, Councilor Rell asked if the new fencing that was going to be placed around the edges of the playing field were going to match the existing fence. And uh, town manager kind of smiled and said, no, the other fence is brown and we're putting up black fence and he kind of chuckled at you know it's really rust well here you have some pictures of the fence um, around Westway in Church Street it's been like that for over 20 years I lived on the west end of Church Street for about 20 years that fence has always been like that I believe it was broken during some construction earlier and uh, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, we're, we're pretty good at spending money. We're pretty good at renovating things and replacing things. But we're not very good at doing maintenance. And I don't see any reason why town staff couldn't have fixed the damaged portions of the fence, maybe utilize summer help to paint the fence. And, uh, you know, there was talk about with this new turf and all the other improvements that have been done to the Catone Field, it's going to be a state-of-the-art facility, something everybody's proud of. Uh, Dan O'Connor said that's the first thing anybody sees when they come to Weathersfield. They don't come to Weathersfield to look at $85 million high schools. They come to watch football games and soccer games. Well, 
I don't see why we're spending all this money on new fences around the edges of the field when the gate walking into the field looks like crap to be kind of crude. Uh, just something that you should consider. I have to, I can't just walk away without making a couple comments about what was said tonight. Number one, the discussion about the lift. I'm not an expert truck mechanic. I don't profess to be an expert truck mechanic. But there is no reason why you cannot jack a truck up with a jack suitably rated and put jack stands suitably rated under the frame of that truck and work on that truck. From what I got out of what Ms. Katz said tonight, our town staff cannot change a tire on one of those trucks because they cannot lift it up. That is just absolute nonsense. You're talking about thousands of dollars to buy jacks, you know, 20 ton jacks, 30 ton jacks. They sell these. And mechanics will jack the vehicle up appropriately and put permanent rigid jack stands under the vehicle that meet OSHA requirements, and they're free to work under the vehicle. Most of those vehicles, a full-size guy can get under the vehicle and work on it. These trucks are up off the ground. Why would you want to pick a truck up four feet in the air to remove a tire that weighs 300 pounds? Now you need another jack to pick up the tire up here where you can work on it. Bend down and change the tire on the ground. You see it on the road, when a truck blows a tire, they send somebody out with a jack and they jack the vehicle up and work on it. I would say 90% of the work could be done on those trucks using much less expensive equipment. The second part I have a huge problem with is there's five mechanics, okay, so the lift is out of service. I didn't know that, but it's been out of service for several years. Those mechanics are completely busy doing other important work for the town. How are we going to save money by spending $165,000 on a lift when we don't have any more mechanics to do the job? So now what? We're going to vend out the lawnmowers and have those fixed so we can work on the big trucks? It doesn't make any sense to me. The other item I have a problem with is the swimming pool. When the swimming pool issue first came up with the diving board and the starting blocks, I went to the high school pool. I hadn't been in there since the renovation. And I looked at those starting blocks. I didn't see anything wrong with them. What I saw was they were filthy. They could be cleaned. Now maybe they were broken. I don't know. I didn't go out there and, you know, I haven't done competitive swimming and diving in years. There was reports that the diving board was not serviceable, it was making noise, uh, had all these other issues. Now we're here tonight, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the diving board. What's wrong with the diving block, with the starting blocks? Are they cracked? Are they unserviceable? Are they dangerous? No, we were told there's nothing wrong with the diving, uh, the starting blocks. You can continue to use them like they are. The problem I saw with them is they're dirty. They need to be cleaned. And they didn't have the logos on them. You want to refurbish them? Refurbish them. Recode them. Clean them. There's a special cleaner. It's called chlorine. It's pretty frequently used around swimming pools. You put the chlorine on and you brush it off. I do my diving board like that all the time. It comes out like new. You can do it with starting blocks too. It seems like we have to satisfy every individual group because the swimming pool didn't get their new furniture they didn't get their new facilities like the rest of the school so we had to come up with something so that they would be happy thank you other public comment yeah Gail Stewart, 411 Main. 
Thank you for voting for the blocks. There seems to be some confusion in regards to the blocks and the diving board, so I can clarify this. Um, in a lot of the documentation, they were referring to the diving board and the blocks as the same thing. They're two completely different things. And it was in the newspaper, and they kept on saying the board, the board, the board, and it was not the board. It was the blocks. We did ask for a new board. We were asking for a new board, so Jody, just to clarify to you, a new diving board was like two to $3,000. And if you recall, my daughter got up here and spoke. It was so the divers could get more spring, get higher in the air. And when we realized that the grandfather clause and all that, that came off the table. Mr. Emmett was looking for the whole new setup. That cost about $30,000. So if we were going to go with the whole new board in the setup and the blocks all new, that you would have gotten a proposal for like $60,000. Okay, so that's to clarify that. Obviously, we'd rather have an old board that does squeak and does make noise and the divers don't get the spring like all the other schools, but we have a championship team and they'll do what they have to do. It's unfair, but they're going to do it. So we're going to still have our diving team, and they're wonderful. And they make states, and they do a great job. The blocks are, have been in need of repair and replacement for so many years, I can't even tell you. My daughter got up here and told you how they have to change the way they go off lane three because of the safety of it. So yeah, they'll continue to use it until they get replaced, but it is needed. And for the team that wins more championships than any other team in Weathersfield High, football included, and I love the football players, these kids deserve that equipment. I've showed pictures, I've done that, and I'm so sick of hearing the nonsense that comes out of here about spending money when these are the kids that want, you want to move back to this town and raise their families in this town. You want to invest in the youth in this town. So I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you so much. If you have any other questions, I can, I was very involved in the process and I can clarify anything else. Thank you. Mr. Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. <clears throat> it's obvious. Nobody recognizes the fact that the state of Connecticut is imploding. Just go look at their budget. Look, they don't even have a budget. They are in such dire needs up there. They're in dire needs for more money. I don't know why they have dire needs for money except for they've been spending way too much. And, they, and then it trickles down here to the towns to spend way too much. Tonight you had a whole slew of items that you were talking about, and, and I was glad to see some resistance to some of these items. But on the other hand, I was sitting out here pretty angry as a taxpayer, thinking, yeah, you're going to commit all of this money. It's committed. Whatever you commit on. And then when, when, we, get the, when we find out what our, our, our results are from the state of Connecticut, we'll all be looking for where's the money going to come from, and it's going to be an increase on that second portion of the tax. We should have had items already designated tonight that would be cut when this dire problem comes down on us whenever. We should have, and if you wanted to put in a item from your collection of hydraulic lifts and, and loaders and line strippings and all of that, you should have had the negative or the reduction over in your regular budget to compensate for it, that you would take if we needed it. 
and people should have known what those would be. But no, what will happen is you'll just say, we need more money. Just increase the tax. Nobody cares. And that's exactly what we have right here with you folks. Your special interests come in. Your manager, too bad she left. Well, I was listening to her. I, I, I was thinking the same things that Tom was saying about she's got five mechanics. They're very busy. They're fixing lawnmowers. They're doing this. They're doing that. But, oh, they need a lift so then they can do some more work. Maybe that's on overtime. Absolutely none. Because the way, every time she comes up here, she's got a truck that's damaged. Oh, it can't be repaired. It, something else is in trouble. We spend so much money on physical equipment. <clears throat> Trucks. Right on down the line. I'm not going to name them off because I can't. There, you have so many of them. But the fact remains, you have these items that came up, ah, $400,000 grant from whoever for pedestrian and bicycles. Good grief. What a waste of grant money. You know what that grant, that $400,000 grant money really cost the taxpayer of wherever? Add the overhead burden rate to it. That's what it's costing. Her, the 400,000 is horrendous, and the overhead that goes along with it from those who are administering it is another big bundle of money. And we wonder why taxes are so high. But I'm sure there are some people that believe taxes should be high. It's just part of their makeup. And that includes most of you people sitting up here. I'm, I'm, you know, I read in the newspaper, Mayor, Montanieri announces he won't run for re-election. I give you a lot of credit, sir. Give us a break. Leave. And there's some others as well. You've, you just spend us down, down, down the tank. And... You say you put a lot of work into it. I did see some work tonight. But when I saw the votes, it was just a couple that said no. The rest voted for everything. Who cares? And then we have the imploding of Harford, our next door neighbor. And I just wanted to mention this, Mayor. And I know that we gave a, an abatement not too long ago for some apartments up on... Ridge Road, and uh, there was an article just a couple of weeks, the 14th of this month, uh, city gives landlord tax cuts, and it was just on one tax abatement, and we're talking about one year, where this, this, this investor is getting $260,000 tax abatement on his property. Where in the world, and it's just like you folks, you, if you're going to give an abatement, you've got to somewhere go into your budget and reduce and be ready to reduce. Instead, nobody cares, including the jerks that they have up in the state, up at the uh, Harford City Hall Town Council. Biggest bunch of clowns going who give these types of rebates without the slightest thought of where the money's going to come from. But they did give the thought where the money's going to come from. And the thought was, and it's going to happen, the governor's going to give it to them. It's always going to come from the state taxpayers, which are all of us. Yet, no consideration. You know those people that, that vote for these kind of things? Go back and look and see how much they pay in taxes based on the 32.2% on their fair market value, based on the fact that many of them, several of them right now don't even have property, and they vote on this kind of stuff. Granted, this was done in 2015, but then anyway, we have so bad of a government mayor, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy your retirement coming here and listening to us and, and worrying about all these problems, but... 
at least I will, because Mr. Mayor, I'm you know, sorry. We we just think that. Can I just jump in real quick? Sure. I, I want to commend you know Paul and Steve, two gentlemen who've volunteered their times. I think Mayor, you've been here on this council 14, 12 years or fourteen. Yeah. Years? I'm yes. sorry. I, to, for somebody who has announced their retirement for uh, serving on a board, they should be commended, not uh, chastised for You it. would do that, sir. You would do that. I wouldn't. Nope. Not from what I've seen, because listen, j just go back and think of this for a moment. Wouldn't you like to be collecting $42,000 a year to put into your, your, your revenue bucket for, this, for the rental of the Standish House? Wouldn't you? With the way you're talking about your, the need of money, wouldn't you like to collect a, a certain amount of money for the Kinney Center that we're only renting to the Weathersfield Historic Society for $100 a year and a, and, and, and a rope of onions? That thing would rent for 80000 or whatever per year, and we own it. But we get $100. And we have the town council to thank for that. And I believe, I don't know which one exactly, but we have our former town councils to thank for that. Well, there are monies out there that we could have been collecting. We care for the properties. We mow the lawns, we, we, we plow the, the snow, we pay the insurance, anything over $3,000 that they pay, we end up hammer, we end up getting the bill. And we definitely would like that money in our revenue bucket, but we don't have it for what, 50 years? Uh, Listen, extra, Mayor, I, I, I've enjoyed coming down here seeing you. You know, I know I'm gonna see you a few more times before I leave, uh, before you leave. I'm not leaving, <laughs> you are. But uh, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty ticked off at the way you folks handle our monies and it's pretty poor. Thank you very much. Hey, you have a nice night. Other public comment? Yes. Casey White, 91 Center Street. I want to thank all of our counselors for their service. And I also want to thank Sally Katz, who is no longer here, for her very professional work and her time tonight. And the comments that were just made were extremely sexist, and they have no place in this town government. Thank you. Short. George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. Uh, a couple of things caught my attention this evening, and I just want to comment on them very briefly. Uh, Tony, I can't see you, Tony, but I know you're there. You mentioned the Chamber of Commerce in passing, and it, it, it struck a bell with me. The local chamber it has its quarters, I understand, in the... Uh, School, the uh, Keeney, Center. Keeney Center, right? Now, do they pay rent? To the Historical Society, they do. I beg your pardon? They pay rent to the Historical Society. Is that a significant no, a, a level of rent, the Jeff, to, uh, to uh, cover the costs associated there with? I don't know. You, you don't know, all right. I, because one of the things that kind of worries, and I worry about different things than some of my fellow citizens do, I worry about the relationship between my elected officials and me. Taxes and death, they're going to be with us for a while. But our elected officials, the relationship that exists between us, I think to me is far more critical. And the a problem that I have is that the National Chamber of Commerce seems to be out of step with a large segment of the American population. And I don't know what the relationship is between the local chamber of commerce and the national chamber of commerce, but as a taxpayer, whatever they're paying, whatever they're paying and whatever we're providing to them, I don't think we should, even if it's only $10 a year. I think the chamber of commerce should be, should be tossed out of that building, go find rent and pay it someplace else. I do not believe that we as taxpayers should be subsidizing 
an organization that many of us as taxpayers, including me, have a big, big problem with what they are doing to our country. So that was just a thought, and I'm not chastising you, to, uh, uh, Tony. I'm just bringing them. This is a reaction. It caught my attention, okay? Uh, one of the other things, and it was interesting, uh, I I've, I've, can't always come, and I, I watch on TV, and I've learned to watch it on my computer, which is really kind of nice. You know, I go back and look at meetings I missed, and I say, gee, that technology is pretty handy, you know? So I struggle with it and make it work. And I seem to be able to hear at home. On my TV, I can always turn the volume up. But when I'm here in this council chamber, where I believe our elected officials should be working very diligently to improve the relationship between our elected officials and our public, which, in my opinion, I don't think it's too terrible. I know all of you, and that's, we can be pretty candid with each other. But the relationship between government and, uh, and the populace at large leaves a lot to be desired. And when we sit here, when the public sits here, and they're not the audience, they're the public, okay? They're the public, not the audience. They all have a right to be able to hear what you people are saying. And I've said it again and again and again. And this evening, I think, uh, What's her name in the, in the room there said, speak up. It's like you almost purposely mumble. Like, I, you know, intellectually, I, 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 I can't understand that you think that you shouldn't be talking to us, the public, so that we can hear what you're saying, so that we can understand what you're saying, perhaps be more understanding of some of the things that you struggle with. And I know you're struggling with some pretty tough items these days. But if all you hear, you know, after a while, people leave. There's, there's, they lose interest in what's going on. I would urge that to do something. And maybe the manager's got to tell you guys every single week when you come to, to hey, speak up so the public can hear. I share that with you. I've shared it with you before. All right. One or two other items that did catch, catch my attention here. La, da, 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 da. You'll bear with me for a moment. Uh... The, it was Sally Katz, no, uh, what was the name from the uh, Parks Department? I jot her name down here, I can't see it here. Kathy, uh, Kathy I, always, I always forget Kathy's name. She was talking about the boats and stuff like that. And she mentioned uh, a boat ramp, and I thought I heard a number attached to a boat ramp to the tune of some $500,000. I think I heard that, I'm not exactly sure. You know, get a little old sometimes, you don't always remember things the way you should, but. Most of the time, I'm not too far off the mark. My recollection was a, va a significant amount of money was spent in the relatively recent past. They built a coffer dam around that whole ramp, um bumped all the water out, and put concrete blocks or something in there. And that wasn't too many years ago. And, and I say to myself, gee, would that deteriorate in a, a relatively short period of time? And I think one of the things that I would certainly urge is, is my elected officials, that you try to ask harder questions. And when someone says, oh yes, we had a lot of problem, yes, we're very busy, I think it's incumbent on my elected officials, really, and I would encourage this, and I'm not chastising any of you, but I would encourage that you ask harder questions. That you ask, and I was, I'll be very candid, I was looking around, how many of you guys got engineering, engineering background? Yeah, not a one. I didn't, that's what I kind of figured. It might be kind of helpful. Engineers ask hard questions. They can be a pain in, a pain in the neck. I almost had some, said something else, but I restrained myself. But I think you would really, it would really behoove you and the relationship between the council and at the local level and our citizens, citizenry if you would ask more, more difficult questions. Ask them. Don't be afraid to ask them. And why, uh, that's about it. And we, again, why do I say these things that aren't hollering about taxes or what they're not doing to my, and I, I was very pleased, very pleased to get back to the barn. That was great. But why am I saying these things? Because I have come to the conclusion that all politics is local. And that was not my an invention, of, that was not a term of my invention. Some of the political leaders of the past have said all politics is local. And, and I, I would share with my local officials to recognize that and to be perhaps a bit more vocal, a bit more pushy, a bit more 
make sure that the staff that's trying to do a good job, that you hold them accountable. And uh, I'm not saying they're doing a bad job, but hold them accountable and peace. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Anything else? Come back up. I'll make it short and sweet. Well, you were short and sweet the first time. You don't have to get any shorter. <laughs> Uh, it's Jim Culpa, 239 Crest Street. I just want to say thank you for your service to the town and approving the capital items tonight. Sometimes it's a thankless job, and thank you again. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Look at the order. Entertain a motion to adjourn, please. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.